skittle skittle. Your dick is now a needle. <laughs> it's a good thing that Lois didn't start, hopefully. Oh no, I started. <laughs> oh, oh shit. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think, I didn't think These are the up. best way we ever started stream. I don't know if it just picked up because recording usually starts like two seconds before a live stream, so I think, I think the recording picked it up on it, but I don't think the live stream did. I what? think all I heard was your dick is now a noodle. <laughs> because that, that's why I usually wait a few okay, seconds. Okay, you know what? Fuck it. I'll... Go on. Fuck it. I'll redo the entire thing, okay? How about that? <laughs> Go for it. Skididdle skididdle, your dick is now noodle. Welcome to the D and D podcast with your host Peach. So, let's do a D and D, eh? Let's do a TPK, guys. Wait, wait, wait. Indeed, box no. all everyone dies. Okay, we've old new character sheet. No, <laughs> suddenly wait, no. a kraken, an ancient kraken, rises from the deeps. Everyone roll perception, and not in perception, roll initiative. Oh. Right. <laughs> Kinley, thank you for renewing your sub. <gasps> Yay! Hey. Oh, shit. You're not going to stream. There you are. Okay, so who wants to do the recap for last time? Um, I don't know. Do you, do you guys want me to do it again? Yeah, you did it pretty well earlier. Uh, okay. So low whiff. Low whiff. I'm, do I'm doing it. 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 Do it. Um... All right, so last session, uh, a lot of shit happened. Um, so the party, well, started off on the island when a big fuck off ship arrived. Uh, everyone was there apart from yeah. everyone was there apart from who, as who had gone wandering off into the the wilderness. So everyone apart from Alina decided to go and investigate the sh uh, the ship, while Alina went off to go and find Hoot. Everyone at the ship started to talk to the captain, saw some weird. Stuff, saw some weird animals, learned that these are from another continent that is well known in the merchant trade. All Janasi. Most Janasi. Mostly Janasi, yes. Um, more to Janasi to be exact. This is a well, uh, yeah, like I said, a well known merchant uh, continent. So, uh, while everyone's been talking, Alina went off to go find Hoot and found Hoot by the church where they were killed before. And. Uh, who decides to actually show Alina the journal, seeing the fact that she was the only one along with Darius who actually knew about Hoot's tr knew about the truth about Hoot? Kenneth. Yes, that he was. You know, he's actually Kenneth. So while they were there, she looked at the journal and recognized both the names because she actually rolled because she got the big brain time with a really good history check. Yay! And then after that, she then realized that oh. Wait a second, this is familiar to a story that I heard as a child that is about a Kenku who stole daggers and was punished for it, which was a story that she had been told as a child that was to her for not stealing. Her being, oh shit, grabbed Hoot, ran back to the camp, and got Darius. During that, Brooke tried to come over and talk to the two of them. And, and Darius then, because they was like, oh shit, you, they're panicking, what's going on? And pretty much they, they, the two of them kind of snapped at Brooke for trying to help calm Hoot down when it wasn't the time or place that they were both trying to rush. So, as such, eventually Brooke fucked off, in a sense, and was crying, and Hoot was panicking, Alina was panicking, and they directed the two of them off. Uh, who and Darius, and told her what she knew about the gods and about the story. Darius corrected her about the story as he knew it better than she did and actually corrected her on the actual way it was. And the three of them went off a bit further into the woods, started talking to try and calm down calm down Hoot. And to help, and to help him figure out what to do and, you know, just the normal everyday thing. Calming down your friend. <laughs> that uh, is panicking over the fact that they are cursed by gods. Uh, well, Brooke went off and cried, uh, Bowie went over to go and help Brooke, and the two of them had a good, a good talk, and Bowie gave some tough, love, uh, almost motherly love to Brooke after she had seen her, after uh, Bowie, with the help of just almost like in a meditation, <coughs> had actually finally seen her family after many, many years of believing, but never getting any answers until now. 
So Bowie being reminded of her grandmother also gave, gave the exact same treatment to Brooke of slapping her across the head when she started to self-doubt. And the two of them went fishing, started to distract themselves, and were set, set up camp and that's where we pretty much ended it in a nutshell, with the two of them up at the two people up at the camp, the other three still in the clearing while Hoot was having a panic attack. We're cooking also, fish! If you want to show the chat what the boat looked like that came in the port, I put it into the NPC pictures. I'll put that there and I'll check it in just a second. But that's pretty much what happened in the nutshell. There was more stuff to it, but I'm not going to. We would be here for a long time because a lot happened last session. Yeah, a lot happened. A lot of backstory stuff. A little bit for everybody. Mm -hmm. But that's what happened. And, well. Yeah, I got nothing. I got nothing. Anything before we start? Fish. Anything else? Nope. Not me, at least. Well, in that case, Peach, take it away. No. Oh. Right. Um. Okay. So last time we left off, Booby and Cook were in camp. Alina and Darius were together, and Hoot was making his way back to camp. What the hell is Floof quoting? <laughs> what the fuck is going on? It's a, I'll, I'll send you the video Captain. later. Floof, you crackhead, what are you doing? F Captain, yeah, yeah, look! I'll send you the video later. I'll send you the video later, Peach. I'm so concerned. <laughs> I'm so concerned, dude. Uh, it's fucking great. Alright. Uh, give me just a second, I can't move my leg. Alright, um, okay, so we will cat- we will start off with Alina. No, we will start off with the three nerds that are in camp. Who has just arrived back at camp? Hmm? We will start off with the three idiots in camp. Oh, Jesus. Oh, boy. So, Hoot's clearly looking just a mixture of pissed off and stressed out. And he, as he's heading to camp, he's not going to look at any of you and slowly just head to a far corner of the tent and just start to lay down. His back facing every facing both Brooke and Billy. Uh, Brooke, you up yet? Buck looks like she's about to say something, but she decides against it. Say something. Hey. Well, Boo is gonna pat Book's back and be like, hey, you're learning. Before go before turning to look at Hoot and just say, Hey, everything's alright over there. He's gonna slowly like turn his head to look at her and just give a small shrug before He's going to, like, take, like, his bag and set it up as, like, a pillow, making sure his animals are out of it. And it's going to look like he's going to try and take a nap, because it looks like he's just so done with the day. Yeah. All right, then. Maybe later. And Oops. she's just going to oh. head back to cooking. Yep. So, Brooke will speak up. It's like, well, we'll let you know when the fish is done if you feel like having any. He gives a thumbs up, but doesn't look over at them. Thanks. Is all of this in mimic or no? <laughs> <laughs> roll for insight. Here, what's the roll? Insight. Insight. Oh god. Perceptional insight. Just insight or perception or insight? Insight. Okay, sorry, 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 sorry. Insight. Oh, that's a plus five. <laughs> so you know he's not talking in Mimic. 
He's talking in common. I'm guessing I should roll for this too. Doing it because I yeah. oh. Uh, <laughs> uh. Now you shut up. Uh, yeah, right. I can't talk. I did it earlier in Rise. <laughs> oh, no. That one. Oh, hey, oh, I, my. Actually, <laughs> wrong, 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 wrong character. Fuck. Oh, that's Lana. Uh, <laughs> oh, it is Lana. <laughs> that's the wrong character. I'm sorry. I'll still take the that one, though. <laughs> oh. You want me to re-roll it? Peach doesn't know that shit. She's like, you're re-rolling now, bitch. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> Ten. I know you don't know. You don't really realize, Gather. You're not really paying attention enough, or you just don't care enough. Most likely, I just don't care enough. <laughs> Brooke's gonna whisper to Bowie. I don't think he's mimicking anything or anyone. Wait, what? She's whispering that to her. It's so like, I I'm not gonna say anything to anyone else, but yeah. Uh, maybe we should bring that up later. So, what if he starts talking like normal, okay? I mean,. What's so strange about talking like normal? He's a Kenku. So? They don't... They don't talk in common. They mimic others. Yeah. Most likely to annoy from what I hear you. <sighs> to Never mind. Or, to annoy or keep their identities hidden. I'm not so sure at this point. But if he stops mimicking, then things are pretty serious. And it's best yeah, to... Yeah, it's know, just... Yeah, seems kind of out of character with him, I guess, that's all. Yeah. I'm just gonna roll something. Are you rolling? Yeah, it's pretty serious. Just like this fucking burning fish over here, dear lord. <laughs> <laughs> like he's immediately going to pull the fish off of the camp. <laughs> Yeah, she's gonna pull the fish out of the camp. Fire just be like, uh... my God, <laughs> Billy, do you want me to cook the fish? I'm pretty sure your mother would be disappointed, but yeah, you know what? Go ahead, cook the fish on the campfire. <laughs> uh, okay, Hello, I can't cook anything else, but I know how to cook fish, so hope for the best then. Yeah, let's hope for the best. Don't be like me and get distracted. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Brooke's gonna cook the fish hopefully successfully. <laughs> Meanwhile, Bowie, Bowie's just right behind her like, focus. Focus on cooking. <laughs> no! Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> no, she's not gonna Go on. do that. She's not gonna do that. But she is gonna, you know, set up everything else, making sure that everything's organized and stuff. Go ahead. Oof. No, go on. Don't worry. I I'm done. <laughs> uh, don't worry. I was gonna say shit post. Don't worry about it. Unless, unless no one heard anything. Oof. I heard you. I heard you. Okay. That's good. Yay. But yeah, okay. I'm done with my stuff. Brooke is cooking fish. She's going to kind of look at the, I guess, look at the burnt one and kind of, Penelope's there, kind of, like, can we go, Penelope? Yeah, Penelope's there. Yeah, she like, tell her, like, and hold out the fish. And, like, if she's interested, then she's going to kind of throw it on the ground for her. You call her name. Now hold up. And instantly her ears flick up into the air and she lifts up her head. She smells the air a bit. In her eyes, you can see dilate as she stares at the fish. <laughs> All right, I'm going to kind of, like, toss it in front of her. Instantly just disappears. She catches it in midair and eats it immediately. Good girl. Imagine how fucking terrifying it would be to have a giant fucking cat <laughs> earn the look at you as you're holding a fish, and their eyes just fucking dilate, and they're just pure black. 
God, that would be terrifying. Lois, <laughs> <laughs> there a was a horse. fish. A horse, this cat is bigger than a giraffe horse. It would be <laughs> terrifying to see those eyes just dilate completely. <laughs> Brooks, Brooks getting is more or less used to this now. <laughs> Death by 30 pounds of fluff. That ain't 30 pounds. <laughs> it's more than 30 pounds. That's like 200 or something pounds. 30 times. Not that big. That's not a mammoth. She's a, she's a big kitty, but she's not that big of a kitty. Hey, hey, did the big kitty get brushed, though? She could be shedding. All right, she could be shedding. Do either any of you want to do any more RP? Um, no, that's about not it. Because he's sleeping. Yeah, and I'm not gonna bother who just not not okay. after earlier. <laughs> Alina and Arians. Oh boy. What are you guys doing? Well Alina's still in the clearing. The hoot left. I think Darius is still there as well. Darius is gonna be following who. Oh he's I following who? He doesn't really want to leave who out of his sight, to be honest. Okay, then you follow him back to the campsite. I want him to be left. I don't know if he's directed at, uh, at Kiff there. Did he, at the end of last, I can't even remember. Did, at the end of last, who did who say he wanted to be left alone or something? Um, I only got to the part where it was, I was just mostly getting to recap with uh, me and Bowie, what was going on? I didn't pay attention to anything else because I knew we he wanted to start. He never soon. technically said it, but it seemed by the way he was acting, he was gonna start walking away. So I think we just, yeah. Well, there is gonna give him a, a wide berth, but eventually he's gonna start to follow him back. Probably about, about fifty feet behind him. All right, you follow him back to the camp, and he disappears into the tent. And he is already asleep. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start setting up my tent. I don't think I've done that yet. Uh -huh. I actually don't know where this tent came from, because I don't think anyone ever said they were setting up a tent. It was uh, like a no. big, like, like it's like not a. We each have our like Never own, own tents. Each tent can like fit two people. Uh, I know Bowie and I. Is a, did I? I pronounced her name really weirdly. Okay, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> Bowie and like, Brooks' tent got set up. Did so it there's though? That. Yeah, we did that. Brooke kind oh, of sucked okay. at it, and Bowie helped. That's okay, I, all so I know for a fact. That, that got that, set up. That means that Hoot is in that tent. No, who is in, like, you know how, like, when you go camping and you have one of those tents that block out the sun and there's, like, a net around it, kind of? You guys never set a tent like that. I, I, I imagine it probably just... happened off-screen after um, Bowie and I set ours up. Because it, it sounded like whenever uh, Bowie was cooking when we first got there and learned about the whole egg thing, I always pictured there was one there. I don't think so. No, no one's at, no. The first tent that was set up was the one yesterday, and the only people that had a tent was Alina bought two, Darius bought one, and uh, I'll put up an image of later what the D and D tents look like. But they're just simple, like two person tents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the only ones that actually said that set up a tent was again Bowie and Brooke. Maybe we'll just say they got set up off camera, aside from like baby Darius's. I don't know. Silence. Anyway. Uh, Darius is setting up his tent. JT? JT? I can't, okay, I can't fucking hear any of you. It's way too laggy. JT, you're all shit! You are where I can hear most of what you're saying. 
Just not key points. You hear me? You little shit. <laughs> Barely. Discord, please stop having a death dying disease. Hello, you a stroke. Hello. 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 Can you hear me? I, I can hear you. Oh, you're setting up your tent now, right? My tent is set up. That is something I am doing in life, is setting up a tent. Does anyone say anything? No roleplay? Or are y'all just quietly sitting around watching fish burn and watching Darius set up a tent? <laughs> I guess Brooke's gonna kind of just tell him, like, as, like, looks up and cooking the fish, and that's about it. Any more tents that need to be set up? I think we're good. So we have own. one, two, Darius has his own. And that's literally it, because... Yeah, everyone's here the tent. Yeah, I could sleep out in the stars. There are two people tents. I know. There's Alina. <laughs> There's, there's two there's, people tents. There's, 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 I know. They're, 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 they're both, each tank can fit two people. Oh, wait, I'm doing, I'm doing the math wrong. Fuck. Hmm. Either way, she's still going There's to tents, okay? Long story short, we have enough tents. <laughs> okay. We, we're Three spending, hours later, we're still talking about tents. We're still talking about tents ten hours later, okay? God. Oh, Welcome to a new 24 hour stream. Tents. Anyway. Anyways, Bree's gonna continue working on her uh, other personal projects, such as the bone carvings that she's gonna sell later. Mm -hmm. And that's jump much it. For you guys, what's Alina doing? Well, she's still at the clearing once who left and then Darius left. She just kind of stayed behind for a moment. She just probably just stood there for a bit, you know, before, after maybe about 10 minutes of just kind of pacing, you know, a lot to take in with everything that, that's been found out in, like, the past, like, hour. She'll eventually make her way back to camp. Alright, you make your way back to camp. She'll, she's gonna As you do, you just watch, um, people in the town going around shopping at the, the boat, and you can see now that, um, there are some, like, stalls set up, made out of boxes and a few sticks and some tarp to make, like, little pop-up stalls. And you see your group up on the your hill. She looks at the stalls and just, just kind of just immediately thinks, I'll be back later. As hmm. she heads back up to the... She heads up to the, to the camp and just... What time is it? Is it, is it afternoon or morning? It is around... I think it's now around noon? Isn't that where so we left off said it was, I think you said it was 11, roughly, when you last stated a time. Let's so, say uh, yeah, I think it's around noon. Yeah. Well, yeah, at least gonna just come back. She's gonna just, you know, just kind of just quietly go, eh, afternoon. And just kind of just, like, sit down, kind of just sit down, pull like her, her knees up to her chest and she's just thinking. She does also say she's just in deep thought. Well, good afternoon. Are you any of you guys in the mood to explain what happened? Um, it's not up for me to explain. Yeah, I can guess it's up to the bird to you know, Spill the beans, I guess. Yeah. Well, Bruce is just gonna look at Brooke and then look at Alina, just kind of expecting, like, Brooke to kind of, like, you know, do something a bit, maybe. Oh, come on! <laughs> Brooke, I don't say that in character. It's a
four and she's already freaking. <laughs> Last time it wasn't even called four. <laughs> well. I am going to defend Brooke to the death. But no, no, no. And honestly, Brooke's just kind of like. <laughs> ah. She doesn't know what to do because she's pissed some people off and they're around her now. And she's like, oh no! Hmm. Well, okay then. I won't play any. The floor. Well, I won't play any further. And besides, I do gotta make us some gold. We're gonna need some supplies if we wanna get further inland for whatever. Don't you guys have thousands of pieces of gold? We need more. We need more. We need more. More. <laughs> more. We need to be richer than the king by the end of this. No. Yes. <laughs> you will. Something will happen. You will lose all your money. No. AKA who dies. And then it all resets. He hearing the the thing about uh, stocking going goes well. I don't know what you guys saw, but. Back down at that, that well, monster of a ship. There is uh, some stall set up. It looks like looks like whatever they've done, they've set up some temporary looking stalls now. Might be worth go checking out later, but right now I'm not really up to checking it out. Yeah. On another note, Brooks like holds up like a fish, like a stick that has a fish on it. It's like anybody hungry? It's only slightly burnt. Not as bad as Bowie would make it. It's not hey. charcoal. Hey, shut up. I bet Penelope thought that, <laughs> that piece of charcoal was delicious. <laughs> You're not wrong. Fish flavored charcoal. Also, is anybody gonna look at the art exactly. that Floof made, like, in a blink of an eye? What art? Art tab. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Flu, how are you We need to find Calamus grade catnip. My god, <laughs> Flu. <laughs> I constantly forget that this fucking cat has a pink bow around its head. <laughs> <laughs> like, every time I'm like, I'm, I expect Flu to draw a really ferocious looking cat that's twice the size of a lion. And every time she draws, I'm like, oh, I forgot it has a stupid fucking bow. Shut up! It's <laughs> 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 so good. Oh, God. But anyway, you're about the fish, and she's like, oh, I'll eat. Later, I'll. I'm not particularly hungry right now. I'll take some if no one else wants any. Yeah, here you go. And uh, well, she's actually gonna kind of. Sorry, no troops. I kind of cut up the fish a little bit and give him, like, I guess half of it. Like, here you go. Thank you. Mm, fuck. It's hot. <laughs> you oh, yeah. Did you just get this? Was that in character? Yeah, Please it was. Say yes. Oh, yes. Can you not recognize when he's doing a goddamn voice? I can recognize it. It's just. I knew that was in that character. That's why I laughed. Yes, I was like, I was double. I, I, t I had a double take right there of like, wait, what? Anyway, continue, JT. What did you say? Did you just cook this? Um, yeah. There was another fish. It got really burnt, though, so I fed it to Penelope. You say hmm. nothing about that. Well, I just said something, so deal with it. No. You did, a, you did a fairly good job. I don't eat fish very often. Don't really have much frame of reference to compare against, but you did good here. Thanks. Hmm. 
buoy as she yeah. like, she's gonna hold up like the other part of the fish of like, would you like some fish that is not incredibly burnt? Just toss it. <laughs> I gently toss the fish at Bowie. She's gonna grab it exactly like Penelope did. <laughs> <laughs> Brooke's gonna laugh. <laughs> strike again. <laughs> Cat gang strikes again. My god, you guys. What? And he's just gonna just look up, and she's just gonna just just kind of just or just shake her head. It's, it's it's like a disapproving shake, but it's it's like just kind of like that joking disapproving shake. She's just gonna go, and I'm and I'm the child here. Hey, it's sometimes good to be immature once in a while. Can't be all sad and gloomy, otherwise we'll end up like him. And she just points towards Darius. <laughs> Who? The Darius? Hell yes. I'm the way life made me. Take it or leave it. Well, I, I'll take it over death, so... Here we go. It just rolls her eyes and just like... She just kinda just like... Just kinda like has like a... Like a, a, a forehead face pop and she just like... I... You guys... I don't know how you do but you always make me speechless. Honestly. Never change, you guys. Well, it's best to have all the good moments while you can. Because it's best to focus on the good moments when, you know, the bad happens. Oh, definitely. It's why I try to remember so much about I can about my home life. So many good memories and... Well, they outweigh the bad ones. A long shot. I always remember the good times. We never know when the bad times will arrive. And when they do, they're not fun. Yep. <laughs> well, I don't know. Speaking of good times, I don't know, did any of you guys have some, I don't know, maybe speaking of good times, any stupid memories you guys have? Hmm. <laughs> stupid as in when I was a teenager, or when I was a dumb little child stupid. Hmm. Both are very stupid. It's just like, just like jokingly like hmm. rub it in and just go, wait, you stupid child moments? So you haven't changed much, I see. I'm only joking, Brooke. I'm only joking, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Brooke's gonna start laughing. <laughs> Trust me, I was worse back then. <laughs> oh, by the gods, I don't want to imagine. Ugh. Whatever. Yeah, worse for- ugh. I was an absolute- I was horrible to my parents. Ugh, goodness. Horrible? Like, how, what type of horrible? Oh, just, I always said stupid stuff, being a stereotypical, like, oh, you don't love me, <laughs> me, just, ah. ugh, and, yeah, they would always spend time, but that's because they were out away from me, but that's because they were sailors, they had a job, they were spending days, if not weeks, at sea. Ah, I see, ah, no. completely different parenting tactics. If I had done anything like that to my parents, I would have been hit from one side of the village to the other and back again. Oh, I'm so sorry, I just dropped that. Um. Uh, eh, well, I was raised by my father and my mother, and I'm not gonna lie, I loved them, but they were not cut out to be parents. Ah, I see. Yeah, then there's my parents. I, I, I think I, I think, yeah, if I ever set that line even once, I sure as hell knew about it. By the nine hells that I know about it. Good thing I never really, really stepped out of line. I think maybe once, maybe twice, and never again. Yeah. Mm. <sighs> I kind of wish I had some of those lessons like that. I was horrible. Said when I was younger, I was 
Just low menace sound. No way it was like that. You would have hated my grandparents then. <sighs> because there was one thing that they always do whenever someone's out of line. What? What's your armor class? <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. Oh, she's basically oh, gonna God. do this. She, she's gonna do the same head bop that she did earlier to you. Like oh, just God. top of, top of the head, just bop. Yeah, yeah. No, I wouldn't like. <laughs> Everyone, roll me perception. Oh boy. Oh boy. I'm gonna sneeze, oh no. Fuck! Oh, wait, I rolled that in the wrong chat! I rolled that in the wrong chat! Everyone did it. 21. Wait, I got higher perception than Alina. Yes! <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys, I rolled that in the wrong chat. What did you get? I got a, I got a 12. Right, wait, that's Wait, that's good. Why is good ears? Oh, frick. Got. You still have Kadir. Oh, yeah, yeah. Put your correct thing in. Sorry, do you want me to re-roll that then? Yeah. Oh my god. What should we roll lower? Should Hoot roll as well, or no? No, he's asleep. Oh, right. Fuck. Okay. Look at, that awkward, look at that awkward smile that looks like that they want to die. Yay. 21. Everyone uh, notices this. It's not really something that's difficult to miss. Um, as you're all talking, you see the shadow of a large bird sort um flying overhead. And once you guys look up, you can see um, the bird that you know is Nyx flying over the island. Just don't know if or Tori is on him or not, but you see the bird flying around. Hmm. Then he looks to Brooke and just goes. Just kind of, she kind of just like points her eyes up and just kind of just goes, well, know anything about that? Um, I have oh, no hey. idea, really. Oh, hey, your girlfriend's back. <laughs> <laughs> Brooke immediately gets flustered. Just she just shakes her head and just. Just in like a just more confused way and just just more like childish confusion of just what is love? Baby, don't hurt, don't me. hurt me. Don't hurt me. I was muted and I said the same thing. Nice. Nice. But like one person is like, we're not I mean, I just I mean, I, I we haven't said we're th we haven't it'd be nice. Relax. <laughs> It's just a jest. Anyways, you want to investigate that? It's hard to investigate when there's a giant bird very high up in the sky, and last time I checked, none of us can fly. Well, you could check if it's going to land or not. Alina is just going to go, uh, none of us can fly. She's just going to just kind of just, just look and just go, you guys forget that I have Kentry. <gasps> who, was, right. who was the first day we arrived here talking to the bird well Kentry's mm -hmm. always with you and always on your shoulder or hidden away somewhere where I can't see him so <laughs> yeah, he's not too far and as such she's just, she can actually look behind and imagine just Kentry's just not too far just behind and she's just ready to go you know, intraconic so Kentry mind if you uh Go see what um, our bird friend is doing up there for us quickly. 
he nods his head and takes off. They're just, just gonna just chuckle and go, We are so lucky that I that we got a dragon. That you've got the dragon. No one else would be able to, it seems. I mean, I mean she's just like like I mean, she could put like the coin, like I can talk to telepathically with this, but all of us well, all of us now speak draconic, so we can all communicate with him anyway. That's great. <laughs> we'll <laughs> finally be able to understand what the what the little bird is saying, and she is gonna nick name Kintry that because she does not remember the name Kintry. <laughs> uh. oh my god. All right, you all watch us, Kintry. Makes his way up into the sky, and after a bit, you can realize that he's not really used to flying up that high. And the bird seems to have also noticed him, and so the bird dives down a bit, so it's at the altitude that Kintry is comfortable at, and they. Seem to meet in midair. Kentry seems to almost collide with the bird. <laughs> you see the, the bird fly over you, but you don't really see Kentry, so you can only assume Kentry has clung to the bird. And after a few minutes, uh, you see the bird like just circling the island. They're not really doing much. And you hear the voice in your head, Lois. Mm-hmm. Then I hear a vo- Kentry's voice in her head saying that he. Nyx is just flying. It's gonna like she goes, Oh well Kentry just told me that they're just flying. He's the bird he's just flying. Said he says Nyx. He doesn't specify if Oratory is there or not. He says that Nyx is just flying. Well if it's nothing important then we shouldn't worry about it. I just, you know, just gonna uh, tele- telepathically just ask uh, Kintry if uh, Oratory's with, with Nyx. Back an instant, no. But Oratory's not with Nyx. I mean, they can't be with each other all the time. Nyx is the giant bird, after all. <laughs> oh, I understand that. Don't worry, I'm not worried about it. She kind of like takes a look to Culver and just goes, I mean, look at this one. When we were back on Moonhead Island, this one went on a, went on his own wander multiple times. He always came back. Hmm. I'm very tempted to do something, but I'm deciding against it. What is it? Oh. Did you say verb? I'm deciding against it. Okay. I'm deciding against my natural instincts. What is it? You you already know, Lois. Mm, I no. don't all over my head right now because I'm kind of brain dead today. You 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 already know, Lois. Vtex, you already know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I don't think Cobalt even big enough. Boo is like five foot two, I think. <laughs> like really short, but for a tabaxi. Mm-hmm. No, five foot four, I think. She is short for a tabaxi. Yeah, yeah she's five foot two. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure Rotary is not too far. Yeah. I mean, maybe they're at the trading district. It seems to be a popular site right now. Yeah. Pop- popular enough for me to actually, you know, start working on things, get some trades going. Hmm. Yeah. Once I finish up the last of this fish, I'll probably go check it out myself. I'll check it out later. I. You know, like, just like, kind of just like stops and just. Takes a moment, just goes. I uh, got things to do. Possibly. Well, it's best to do it now while the sun's still up. She jokingly just just looks over and just chuckles. <laughs> it depends on how much confidence I'm actually build up during the day. We'll see. 
Well, hopefully you can build it up fast. Oh, he just uh, chuckles again and just goes, I've been trying to build it up for months and still haven't. I've been building up, building it up for years. I'm not usually this act of talking, you know? <laughs> I wish I had that. I wish I had that ability right now. Oh, no, you don't want to wait for years for confidence to grow. Usually I'm quite confident, but uh, I don't know why I'm so... Ah, never mind. You kind of remind me of my sisters, really. Hmm. You have sisters? Or had, have sisters? Yeah, I had lots of siblings. My parents <laughs> loved each other very, very much. <laughs> uh, they just go, huh, must be nice to have a sibling. I was an only child. Oh, well... If you're an only child, and if you have siblings, be prepared for the best and be prepared for the worst, is all I'll say. <laughs> uh, my parents only had me. I don't know, they might have had more. I mean, half-elves live about 200 years, but I was the only one that they had at the time. And, I mean, I've been gone for a year, so they might have had, for I know that I could have a sibling out there I don't even know exists. But, I highly doubt it. Yeah. I know I don't have any siblings, or if I do, they're half siblings on my dad's side. Let's, you know, let's maybe not talk about my father. He wasn't in. <laughs> well, why, why don't you guys, like, you know, do your own thing, book and go to the trading district, see what's going on there, because I am interested in, you know, Selling my words there. I need to know what my competitors competitors are up to. And Alina, you know, build confidence. Do it. <laughs> I will try. It's something that's been gnawing at me for a while. Yeah, it happens to the best of us. But I'll stay here, keep an eye on who, you know, Yes. Yeah. I'm right. gonna go. Oh. What's everyone doing? Oh, Brooks finishing up the last of the fish, uh, kind of cutting them up so that everything, and she's gonna take some of it with her, like kind of to eat as she walks, and she's gonna actually go check out the uh, trading. And like everything. Hello. 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 I hear you. Hello. Did you not hear what I said? We heard. Brook go shop. We heard. Oh. Brook go shop. Say it again. Brook go shop. Well, num yum. Exactly. Okay. What's the others doing? Sleeping. <laughs> you know what you're doing. <laughs> Bowie's, Bowie's currently going to keep watch on the camp as well as work on her bone, you know, artisan goods. Alright. About Alina and Darius. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. Darius is just eating and relaxing alone once his tent is finished. He's just sitting at the camp, just just thinking and just kind of just unsure, just thinking as she's just going, mm, mm, should I? Should I? Not? Should I? Shouldn't I? Kind of look on her face. What did you say Darius was doing, JT? I didn't quite hear it. Eating and relaxing by himself once his tent is finished. I hear a cat screaming. Hey. Alright. Kit. It. Ah. Ah. Uh, what is Brooke doing once she gets down to the area on the beach um, where all these makeshift stalls have been set up? 
Now she's gonna kind of, kind of like as she's walking by, look at some, like if anything catches her eye. She's also kind of generally looking for maybe some extra paints, like some more watercolors, because she's running low on some certain colors. Um, roll me a d6. Oh. That's a rare die we never use. Oh, that's a five. Alright. As you begin looking around uh, all these stalls, you do find your paints, but something that catches your eye a bit more than the paints is a stall that has some jewelry. And the thing that gets your attention the most is a, a ring that seems to shine brightly in the sun. It's no more No more a, I'm joking. <laughs> it's a, I guess you could say an aquamarine colored ring. Call it that. Hmm. She's gonna go to the person selling the ring and ask what it is. Alright, the the water genasi looks up from the boxes that they were continuing to unbox from behind their stall, and they smile at you and, set, and asks, which one are you talking about? I point to the uh, aquamarine looking one. They pick it up and inspect it for a moment, almost like they're trying to remember which, what thing, what does this particular ring do? And after a moment, they um, seem to have come to the conclusion what the ring does. And they put it back down on the stand and chuckle a bit and says, Well, I don't think this ring will be much use to you. Oh? But if you want to know what this ring does, it is a ring of water walking. Oh. You're right. I doubt that'd be very useful to me. But it might be useful to my friends. I am the only one that knows that spell. <laughs> How much does it cost? In- oh. She smiles and says, 500 gold pieces. I'll, I'm, I'll come back for it. I'll consult my party members on that matter then. He smiles and nods. I look at the other rings. Are, are any of them in- interesting looking? You look around these rings and as they don't quite seem to be as interesting as the first ring that you saw. You hmm. see one that may, seems to be made of pure gold. One that seems to be made of silver. One looks like it to be completely black. There's a diamond encrusted on the the front. It's almost you almost think it's a wedding ring or maybe an engagement band, but you're not quite sure. She's staying away from the wedding ones. <laughs> she's afraid of commitment. No, she's afraid to get cursed again. Dang habit. Hence commitment. Alright, what else are you doing? Uh, well, she is gonna go buy some of her paints, just like a few, like, she's running a little on blue, some other colors. Alright, I'll say, just go ahead and take 15 gold pieces from your inventory. You're able to find some reasonably, reasonably priced paints. So. Alright. Gonna look around at other like, all other items as well, just seeing what they have. Roll a d5. <laughs> five. You... Alright. You look around, and you see a stand that has almost like someone brought in bunch of like two walls but upon further inspection you realize oh these are just pieces of flat wood that they have they have standing up you make your way over to the stall and realize that on these pieces of wood there is numerous weapons on display oh hmm 
what kind of weapons? Right. Just a lot you, of all of them. <laughs> you look at the this this really nice display, and you see in this order a short bow, crossbow, a light crossbow, dagger, club, hand axe or two, mace, a great axe, a lance, a long sword, a rapier, a scimitar, a long bow, and a shield. Hmm. I'm gonna look at the ones that I'm actually proficient with, which are the clubs, the dagger, mace, the scimitar, and the shields. Just kind of look at them. Like, see how quality they are. Up? Yeah, I'm kind of picking, like, maybe one of the daggers up, maybe a shield. Okay. You began, like, taking some of the weapons off of these, um, the stands that they're in, looking, checking them over, seeing what kind of see how they, they feel in your hand, how they move, and just like the general quality of these weapons. And you almost get spooked by the um, and you didn't quite realize that you were being watched. And behind the stall is a, a rather large um, a man. He seems to be maybe an elf of some sort. You're not really sure. He's definitely not a water genasi. They, or at least if he is from Water Genasi Heritage, you can't tell. And he chuckles a bit as he watches you and asks in a rough voice if any of these weapons catch your eye. Do any of them catch my eye? <laughs> I don't know, do they? Uh, it's up to you. Brooke's just gonna say, it's like, I'm just looking around. So it's good to have backups. He smiles and smiles just a bit, and he says, "Well, maybe would help you come to a, a decision if you knew that these are all plus one weapons." She becomes intrigued by that. But that all, uh, then yes, look at that. Uh, that includes the shield too, right? Mm-hmm. She's immediately interested in the shield because. Shield time, yes. You have so many fucking shields! Wrong! <laughs> I gave you one do. away! I have a barrel in, and a shield! And a dragon scale shield! No, I gave that to who? Oh my god. To who? I gave it to who, okay? I... <laughs> Why couldn't you be one of the weird characters who's obsessed with collecting daggers? Why are you the weird one that has to collect shields? <laughs> that was by accident, dang nabbit! Sure. It really was! He notices you checking out the shield and asks if you would like to purchase it. Uh, she's how much? 500 gold pieces. Hmm. Oh, sorry. Uh, hmm. Just gonna think for a second, and I think it's like I have enough money. Um, hmm. Yeah, sure. So, add a plus one shield to your inventory, I guess, <laughs> or I can do it. I can do it. <laughs> the shield obsession is not in character, it's an out of character thing because uh -huh. <laughs> AC. I mean, AC is 17. You're Shut not squishy. Up. I want it to be higher. Swear to God. 500 gold gone? Huh? So how much? So 500? Yes, it is 500 gold pieces. <sighs> Worth it. Hmm. Exactly, Lois. Brooke, how many shields do you need? Yes. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, is she going to look at anything else? Or is she, she... Can, going to continue on? She's going to continue on, actually. I'm not going to replace the... Never mind. If you don't replace the it, what? I'm not going to Replace what? The club? The dagger? The... the wait, do they have court steps? Nothing. What? No. No. Oh. I've been using it as my main weapon. Roll me a... Oh. Four. <laughs> Lois, no. Okay, if you guys want to know, she only keeps two. She, well, she had that third one, but she was planning on giving it away. She only keeps, like, two at her time, so she is going to ditch the barrel lid. Away no, no one's gonna buy it from you. This is a barrel lid. She's not gonna sell it. She's just literally probably just gonna. <laughs> probably no, I said you might as well just throw it away because no one's gonna buy it. I. She's not trying to get anyone to buy it. <laughs> All right, you begin looking around the room, or the room, and I by room I mean the area, and you your attention is grabbed by the sound of a cat. And for a moment, you thought, oh, hey, maybe Penelope followed me and someone is getting mauled. So you began to see around like crazy. And then you land your eyes on two people. One, you do not recognize because you did not speak to this man before. But I will post his picture again in NPC. Pictures. If my... What top load? Mm. You see a blue tiefling with a hat similar to Darius with and a mine. nice big old white feather. Yeah, and yours. I forgot you also have it. I don't and always wear it. him now, you also see a very colorful, the most, you, you've never seen an Aarakocra that looks quite like this. And I will post their picture. And you see a very brightly colored Aarakocra standing next to this blue tiefling. And around them, you see numerous cages containing animals. Oh. What animals are there? I'm happy you asked me that. Oh, God. Oh, no. Okay. Um, actually, you know what? Roll me... A nature check to see if you would recognize any of these animals. Come on, I'm the druid. Come on, I'm the druid. Because these are pretty exotic animals. Come on, I'm the druid. No! I will let you re roll because you have been to this nation where these animals are from. Yay. I'll let you know the there's one animal that you do recognize immediately. A, Without having to roll anything, and that would be an owl bear cub. Oh god! So go ahead and re-roll. <laughs> yeah, you don't recognize any of these animals except for the owl bear. <laughs> I'm the druid. I swear. Someone screenshot those two rolls and then post them and be and post them in the dice roll so I can pin them. <laughs> downgrades, people, downgrades. <laughs> All right. What you gonna do, Rook? You gonna make your way over there? What you doing? Gonna make my way over there and ask what the flip these animals? Not like exactly that, but yeah. Take my way downtown. <laughs> Alright, give me just a second. So, you make your way over there, and the moment that these two people, or this, the, 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 blah, 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 the moment the Tiefling and Eric Capra notice your presence, both of them turn around to you and have very joyful smiles on their faces. And the Eric Capra's rings, wings, English, please. The Not Eric allowed. Capra's Wings spread out happily, like he's like almost like a like they're spreading their arms, and they smile and say, "Welcome, welcome. How may we help you today?" Oh, I'm just looking around, and that is a lot of animals. 
Mom. Yes, yes, it is. Would you like to peruse at our collection that we have? Um, um, I am here. Smiles. Do you recognize any of our animals today, or would you, or do you require assistance? Um, yes, please. I'm not very familiar with most of these here. Smiles, and he leads you over to the first cage. In this, in this cage, you recognize the owl bear cub. Recognize the owl bear cub, and it doesn't really seem to be hostile at anything. Like, or, um, not experienced because you never really experienced an owl bear, I think. But from your like general knowledge of owl bears, they're supposed to be very vicious and territorial. The cub just seems to be. Enjoying its the sun bath it's getting currently. Hmm. You carry on to the next cage, and this one is quite large. It's honestly, you think that Penelope would fit in this cage. Um, and the air cockro smiles and says, "This beast here is called Zeng, and I will post the picture in just a second, so you can see it." I will give like a general. Also, just to know, I will post. not waste all, all my money on dang nabbit. You can't afford any of them. The first. Oh, God fucking damn it. Come on, laptop. Alright, so the first animal that I said, the Zang, I think that's how I pronounced it. Hello? Yeah. Yep, yep. Okay. Load laptop. Please. I'm begging you. Alright. This first animal is a very large cat. It is not the same size as Penelope. It looks like it may be just a bit smaller of it than her, but it's not quite that large. It has a long brown orangish mane around its neck. And the most noticeable feat about this animal is that it has four tails. Oh. Give me a second and I'll post it in the creature encounter because I'm not, there's no way in hell I'm describing this animal. I'll just butcher the, the, the description. Oh, hello. You see that big old thing. The first cage that you encounter. What? What do you say anything? Does Brooke say anything kind of upon coming to this cage? She's gonna kind of foreseeing the cat. She's gonna go like, "Hi, big kitty." <laughs> cat looks up at you very lazily. You can see, and it has quite a few bones in its cage. Like what? What you would think? Um, bones for maybe a deer or something. This is something that Penelope would chew on. Like, the bones in this animal's cage. She's gonna go, like, I wonder Do if you and Penelope... anything else? Yeah, it's like, I wonder if you and Penelope would get along. The air copra smiles and says, Does this creature... Um... Intrigue you? Uh... I don't see general miscasts that often. Unless they're constantly traveling with you. And what you see one every day. And then proceed to question. <laughs> she says, You don't see general cats that often unless they're traveling with you and you see them every day. <laughs> Check goes a bit with you. To know the price? I'm not too interested. <laughs> I can only ha handle one, I think. He nods his head in understanding. Alright, would you like to see our other animals? Of course. And he continues on to lead you over to a bird cage. And you come over to this cage and you realize this cage was covered up. And you think for a moment you're like, oh wow, they're keeping their birds covered up? What the heck? You realize very quickly why they have the cage covered up. 
Clear Cocker reaches out and pulls a sheet off of this very large cage, and immediately you just hear dozens of different oh, bird calls being screeched out. And oh, you know what? the culprit is like 20 of these little birds. <laughs> these birds are these birds are the size of a squirrel. And they're all just like popping around the cage, screeching different bird calls that they have mimicked. Some of them sound like maybe like a cat. Some of them sound like actual birds. It's just a clusterfuck of different sounds. Concern. <laughs> that is the look on Brooke's face right now. She's just concerned. Like what? The Eric Conqueror <laughs> chuckles as he, <laughs> as the birds just scream out, and he chuckles and says, "This." would be our small colony of pot ribbons. They're like griffins, but much smaller and much more annoying. I can tell. Do one of these um, interest you? Aren't they always this annoying? Only when they're in some place that they've never been before. Oh, Ooh, yeah, that's... They love Sorry, to that's... mimic different sounds that they hear. Yeah, that's probably not going to cut it. We, uh, our group is probably going to be traveling a lot more soon. Mm -hmm. Then I guess that is... That doesn't sound, sound like the, the right home for the one of these. Would you like to see our others? Mm hmm... We have three uh, more cages for you to see. Might as well. Alright, you come across the next one, and for a moment you think, Oh, it's a red panda! Oh, then baby. as you become closer to the cage, the creature's head lifts up and looks at you, and you see this. Oh. As no. To this cage, the air cockra smiles and says, This is our panda lope. Panda lope. Hmm. They're very, they're usually solitary creatures. A little territorial, but they get over it once they get to know you. Hmm. It's quite cute. Are you interested in one? Brooke's totally not, but she is going to ask the price. Smiles. 10,000 gold pieces. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't interested in one, but not interested. Like, I'm afraid I can't afford that. Nods his head. <sighs> That's too bad. Would you like to see our other two? <sighs> I'm assuming they're also probably not my price range, but might as well. Seeing animals is always nice. Alright. You go on to the next one, and this one is a very also a very large cage. And at first you think, wow, that's a fucking bear, dude. But then you're like, oh, wait, no, it's a badger. And you're like, wait, no, it's both. And you realize, after the fucking picture loads, um, that you're actually looking at a badger bear. Hello, cutie. The air cockroach smiles and says, maybe don't put your hands too close to the cage. When they don't know people, or when they're when they are in unfamiliar places, they can't. They tend to get a bit snippy. Hmm. And this badger bear is the size of a fully grown grizzly. <laughs> Brooks had enough of intimidating animal companions. The bad, um, the air cocker smiles and asks if you would like to know the price of this animal. Uh, why not? He smiles and he beams and says, 50,000 gold pieces. Keeps getting more expensive as I go. <laughs> JT, no. <laughs> Alright, he decides to lead you on to their very last cage. And you think that you've maybe seen this creature before. Maybe when J you were walking with Darius a little bit before. 
and you realize that this is a, once it loads, I will tell you. On the top. A Thunderbird. Oh, <coughs> Hello. I can finally get rid of all these pictures on my tabs. Thank God. Alright, you come you come on to the last cage and you see the thunderbird what is brooke's reaction bird um no but she's like another bird and she actually was like oh, i think i might have seen that earlier i think so i think my partner mentioned that he saw you walking with your friend your friend seemed very interested in our beauty here hmm. i think he so. had a he had a hat like my partner's I know who you're talking about, yeah. Hmm. Struck me as the animal type. Would you be interested in this one? I assure you, this one is much cheaper than the others. There will run you 3,000 gold pieces, and you can tell that he misspoke. 3,000 gold pieces. Like, was that, wait, was 3,000 him speaking, or, like, was that him stumbling over and then correcting he, himself? He was about to say 5,000, but he corrected himself to 3,000. And hmm. um, before you say anything else, he says, but I don't think we're going to sell her quite yet. I think our, I think your friend wanted to come back and see this beauty. Hmm. Well, I'll let him know, and I'll see if he's still interested. Lois, <laughs> interested. Hey, hey, cool bird. Thank you. Thank you. Are you interested? Bye. Bye. <laughs> uh, Brooke's gonna say, um, thank you for showing me these amazing animals, and I think I'll be on my way now. What'd you say? She's thanking them for showing her around the animals. She was she wasn't planning to buy any of them. She just wanted to see the pretty the pretty animals. <laughs> Most she, she's expensive away. was the badger bear at 50,000. Nice. Um, the, the Zang cat thing was 20,000. The owl bear cub was 30,000. The panda lope was 10,000. Pot riffin was 8,000. And the thunderbird is 3,000. Hmm. Yeah, Do you like to look at any of the other stalls? Gotta have, uh... it, you ha you can tell that you have not looked at three of the others, or at least the three ones that are currently set up. Yeah, might as well. Before we do that, what are the others doing? Uh, sleeping, snoring at this point. <laughs> Shut up. Doing the intense thunk. <laughs> Bowie is, is most likely just finishing up, like, you know, her resins and oiling of, you know, her bone stuff that she's going to sell soon. All right. Uh, once Darius is finished with all his food, he's going to actually make his way down to the, the market as well to see the sights. Right. should get there. Roll me a D6, man. Oh boy, he's gonna go through the same shenanigans. That's what I like to call a three. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you look. You walk down to the beach area, and one of the first um, booths that you come across is a smaller booth that looks like it has some potions on sale. I'll check that out, sure. 
All right. You make your way over and you see a little selection. Just see what looks to be currently three different types of potions, but there's a few of each one. Well, what kinds are they? I can't buy your shit if I don't know what your shit is. Um, so from the fact that you have journeyed a bit, I think you would understand you would um, know what these potions are and you recognize these potions as fire breath potion, growth potion, and a water breathing potion. Are they not labeled? Like, what the fuck? That's so was unsafe. <laughs> After a moment of inspection, I'm not going to call like, this person's oh. big business practices, but like, man, you were you were just really like looking over them for a second. You weren't really paying attention, but like, wait, are these labeled? And you look a little closer and you realize, oh wait, yeah, they are. They are indeed labeled. Okay, that's the relief. I just the shopkeeper keeper was like. Oh, yeah, so we have the growth potion right here. Oh, shit. <laughs> it, 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 Seriously. <laughs> oh, my God. Now, it may have some side effects of breathing fire or you walking on water and not growing, but that's perfectly normal, I assure you. <laughs> At least well, I wasn't at the beginning of this episode. <laughs> Actually, uh, I'm going to ask the the shopkeep, the stand owner, whatever that whatever they want to be called, how much for each of them. All right. You see behind the booth is another tiefling male who. Not really. Doesn't really look. He looks like a normal teeth, or not a teeth, like water genasi. He's just blue skin, like that. And you get his attention, and he looks up at you. He was unboxing a few other things, and he looks up at you, gives you a kind smile, and asks how he may help you. Good afternoon. I was hoping you could tell me the price on some of these potions here. Smiles and asks you, which one are you? Which one are you interested in? All of them. He turns toward or gestures towards the fire breath potions, and he says, "These are two hundred and fifty gold pieces each, or I can strike you a bargain." But we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, the growth potions are three hundred gold pieces, and the water breathing potion is three hundred gold pieces as well. I'll take one of each, please. One of each? Alright, I can certainly do that for you. Are you sure you have the gold? Uh, yes. I certainly do. Alright, go ahead and watch this run. You did say there are discounts to be had. I already think of myself as cheap, but if I can save a little bit, I'll gladly try. He smiles just a bit. And he says, well, since you are buying one of each, he thinks for a moment, like he, he's writing down his paper, like he's, you can tell he's trying to tally up how much um, these potions would be all together. He says, well, this would cost you 850 gold pieces normally, but you are a first time customer and I usually like to give my first time customers a, a small discount, especially if they buy more than one from me. And since you are buying three, I guess I could cut that in maybe half. What are you thinking about 425 gold pieces? For all three. That's far too generous. How about 500? Smiles. Sounds good to me. So deal them. All right. Darcy gonna count out five hundred gold pieces and hand them over. He thanks you kindly and hands you your three potions. 
Go ahead and add them to your inventory. Dopamine. Are you so going to look at anything else? Of gear. I'm going to look at so <laughs> many things. But first, I need to add right. this shit to my inventory. One, two, three, four, five. When you're done, roll me a D5. But first, I'm going to ask for the guy's name. I don't want to leave without learning his name. <laughs> Smiles and says... Learn his secrets. His name Steal is Hello. Identity. Become him. Could you put that name in chat? Name is Celos. Right. I... Nice to meet you. I'm Darius. Miles and Nods. Nice to meet you, Darius. Or, you said Darius. I apologize. And unlike any of the other um, people you have talked to in this area, he, his common seems to be much more fluent. I'll be going around to the market for now, but I'll be back later. Nods. The words inter interest me. They may be of great help later on. So I'll be seeing you around. All right. I look interested. I look forward to seeing you. I'm going to wave goodbye and head on out. All right. Well, maybe five, my dude. Did you get a three? All I right. got a three. Look around, and after a moment, ooh, ooh that's a really cool bird. Um, after a moment, you find a, a booth that has a few scrolls. Get out of here with that boring nerd shit. I can't read. I'm going to take mental notes. Jared, I'm at I never fucking learned how to read. Alright. Roll me a D4, my dude. Oh, I said a D4. Uh, Worst <laughs> instinct in my ass. But I got a 9. I, 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 I'm keeping up the, the streak. Of the mighty, <laughs> I got one. All right, you look around, and just like Brooke had a moment before, your eyes and ears are drawn towards the animals. We just could start up by saying, "Ah, fuck that shit," before realizing ah, I said I'd go back to talk to that one guy. <laughs> He's going to make his way over there? Creepy animal <laughs> yeah. He's creepy. He's How is prepared. he creepy? Because Darius doesn't like big, scary animals. He's going to steer very clear of the bear -ger. The bear badger? Or the badger bear? It, it is the bear -ger. It will always be the bear -ger to me. All right. Make your way over there, and the tiefling that you met before up from what he was doing, and he smiles happily at you. Oh, my friend! So glad you could make it back! Glad I could as well. <laughs> Would you like to look at our selection? Sure. So, I'm not going to go into the description like I did last time, because you can see the pictures. But he, he takes you down the line, but before he does, he introduces you as Gyrus. Put his name in chat in a moment. He introduces himself as Gyrus and his partner, which is a nearby air cocker that looks very colorful. He introduces the air cocker as Mango. <laughs>
then he takes you down the line of animals. He shows you the Berger, the um, fucking Pantalope, the Albert Cub, the Pot Griffin, the Zang, and the Thunderbird that you saw before. Oh, Gearus. I put it in the NPC pictures. Is the Air Crocker's name Kronika or something? Oh, the Air Crocker's name was Mango. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I didn't make the rules. It's now Gearus and Kronika. No! Man, no one... Please, chat, I can't see you right now because I don't have Twitch pulled up, but chat, please tell me someone else plays Mortal Kombat 11. I, I think I'm the only one in this call who does. God. He's a nerd, everybody. <laughs> McKinley said Gyarados. <laughs> <laughs> McKinley said Gyarados. <laughs> Alright, what is Darius doing? Well, he's going to be checking out the animals, but without too much conviction. He's not really that interested. He checks down the line, showing you the birds, or not the birds, the animals, and stops once you guys get to the Thunderbird. Uh, your friend came by earlier. Um, seemed a little interested in our, our beauty here, but I told them that she was not up for sale yet, since you seemed to be so interested in her earlier. Yes, it's quite fascinating, the biology of it all. I can't say no, I know much about it. What does it do? Well, they're used in many different ways. Some use them as fishing birds, as they have an ability that once they dive into water, they can shock nearby animals, particularly the fish that they're hunting. Um, some use them as messenger birds. Some use them as just normal companions, some use them as hunting, for like we're hunting rabbits or even some smaller birds. This so you know, this this Thunderbird is about the size of a normal eagle. Like a bald eagle. And I'm really torn because out of character I wanna buy it, but in character I don't. <laughs> tell this man he's like an over enthusiastic car salesman he's trying to like tell you all the amazing things about this animal and hopes that you buy it like you can tell like just like for you to know he's like an over enthusiastic car salesman i need to update my notes anyway maybe you should skip me and go on We've been doing, okay. like, dairy shopping for a while now. What is Alina doing? Well, once uh, uh, Darius left, uh, Alina offered her help to to Bowie. We did a little bit in text role play, just a tiny little quick conversation. And Alina is helping Bowie finish up uh, with the resin and we, him helping, her, helping her make the weapons and stuff with the bone. Alright, you guys are able to do that fairly simply. Play, but it's a bit, but you're able to do it. What you gonna do after? During that time, that was just to go. Bowie, mind if I ask you something? Sure. Why not? Also, don't mind me, I'm just doing laundry at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Uh, how... Uh, what I was kind of vaguely talking about earlier, how do you build up confidence to, like, talk to someone? Hmm, what do you mean? 
been something I've wanted to ask someone for a while, and I'm not sure when or how to ask it. Burp's dead. Unless I cut out. Bill, did you do the big oof? Oh, he is doing laundry, so. Yeah. Oh, he left. Oh. So he did the big oof. Burp, no, come back! <laughs> My internet always disconnects whenever I, I walk into the fucking kitchen or dining room, okay? Oh no. Did you hear what I did you hear what I said or do you want to repeat? Uh repeat it just so I can be refreshed a bit. Oh, fuck, what did I say? <laughs> what did I say? Um Oof. Uh, something about confidence. Yeah, like I, how do you ask someone like I don't know, it's something that's been on my mind for a while and I want to ask them about it, but I don't want to overstep my boundaries. Well, well, first off, you could start by respecting one's boundaries. You can ask if they want to talk about something. You know, like if they have enough time, like how you did just now. <laughs> you can start off with that. <laughs> yeah. yeah like, it's, it sounds personal to me, and well, there's only one other person in this group that might know what I'm thinking, what I'm, what I'm talking about. Huh. Well, it's pretty simple. Just ask if they can talk. And if they say yes, then you can talk. If they say no, then try another time. It's really that simple at times. Yeah, it is, and I've been freaking out about it. I've been waiting, I've been, I think, about five months I've been wanting to ask, but every single time I've backed out and just been quiet instead. If it bothers you that much, then maybe you should try now. Or maybe when the sun sets and everyone else is, you know, a bit busy with the afternoon deals and stuff. I'll wait to see see if they uh if they when they come back. I might go check out the, the, the shop thing myself, but I don't sure. Huh. Well one thing's for sure is you've basically helped me make sure that these things are done by the afternoon. I'm not not afternoon, evening, so we might be able to earn ourselves a bit of gold, eh? <laughs> With how much gold we all have combined, I'm surprised that uh, any any of us are is are doing a way to get any more gold. Well, here's the thing. I only have, what, 125 since I do not trust myself with money, especially these kinds of currencies in a new land that I barely know. Hmm. So, it's best to just, you know, always make more. And besides, I do need to practice. Huh. I mean, it is interesting to watch, and hey, maybe you can teach me some things. Maybe I hmm. can then teach you about currency. Maybe. But there is one thing that I'm curious about. What is it? How do you make a bow? <laughs> oh, well, it depends. I don't know much about bows. Hang on, let me just... Uh, I'm just going to just take her bow off her back. I keep this around me way more than I should, but... It's personal, but... It depends. I mean, looking at mine, 
I'm just gonna like hold it and just kind of like tw like almost like turn your hands. I mean, it's a bit of wood, bit of metal, bit of fur, some there's some leather on it. But this wasn't my bow. I was gonna get it at some point, but uh, I got it earlier than expected. Put it that just to put it lightly. This is my father's bow. He had it custom made. Huh. Nice. My grandfather has a bow, but it looks completely different from that that I see. <laughs> it was made. It was just made out of wood and strings, and he didn't use arrows with it. I'm gonna just give a look over. What did he use then? He, uh, if I remember from the stories that my grandmother told me, he used it to hit people in the head, use the bowstring to strangle people, twist their arms around, and shot enemy arrows back, if I remember. <laughs> Stuff of legends, I tell you. Okay, then. Didn't expect that, but, you know... No, I, 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 never mind, I got nothing to say. That is like, something. That really is something. <laughs> well, but when you grow up in a, you know, a warrior's tribe, you get to hear, hear a lot of, well, extraordinary feats done by, you know, everyday people in our village or in our tribe. Uh, didn't grow up. Didn't grow up anywhere in, in Miller near, near. Well, as far as I know, none of my family really have a military connection, so I can't say I grew up in anything war-based. Hmm. Peaceful hunting life for me, my family. Well, was a peaceful hunting life for me until I had to leave. I've been meaning to ask you that for a while. Like, why? But I'm assuming that it's because of the king. Like, they sent a message to your home and you're going to have to go and stuff, or something else, for sure. Well, he's just going to go really quiet. I was away from my home when the king actually asked for me. Ah, uh, so it was something else then. I have no reason to pry any further, so. Thank you. I thank you for not prying. I'd rather not talk about what happened. I'll still bring it up every once in a while. Just, you know, <laughs> I still want to know the answer as to why. Maybe one day I'll tell you, but I'm not really comfortable talking about what happened. All right, that's fine. I'm not really comfortable talking talking about what happened to me as well. I mean, it's a bunch of us, what it sounds like. Yep. Seems like a lot of us have more in common than we think. It's just a matter of opening up to people. I'm pretty open. I guess the most I'll say is something happened, and if I didn't leave home, people would have gone hurt. I left home to protect those I love. I, I, that's fine. Anyways, since we're basically done here, you got anything you want to do? Other than hoping to talk to a certain person later, no, I got nothing. Certain person being Brooke mm -hmm. or yeah. Darius? She's, yeah, it's Darius. He's the only one that I know who has any kind of military background out of all of us. Well, he's in the market right now. Why don't you go, you know, scamper off, ask him. <laughs> I will, I will, I will. You want to come with? At least check out the market? You're going to stay here and uh, keep an eye on uh, Hoot. I'll keep an eye on him. All right. Besides, 
someone needs to keep, you know, watch of this little camp here. I'll I'll visit the, you know, the trading the, thing later. The beach? Huh? Is Lena making her way to the beach? No, in a second, yeah, she's... Well... Here, and she's gonna hand over her bow to uh, Rui, and she's gonna, if you wanna, like, have a look at this, see if you can figure out maybe a way to make a bow using bone or some other minerals, you can... Use this bow, my bow is reference. <laughs> Thanks. But wouldn't it be better with you for self defense? Alright, I'll keep it for now, but if something happens and if, if it's quiet and we're not doing anything, I'll let you look at it and study it. Or, or I could do the simple thing. Just take it while you're asleep. <laughs> <laughs> you take it when you take it when I'm asleep and I wake up and it's gone. You're gonna panic. I know. <laughs> uh, I won't do that to you. No, no, no. That that's something I would expect Hoot or Brooke to do. Yeah, which is exactly why I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I love those. We two. all. We already have enough chaos with two people. Don't need another half. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, when... I'm gonna be honest, the first group, the first time I met this group, I honestly thought the fact that me and Doris were the only two mature ones. I was honestly kind of worried that I was gonna, I was gonna be the babysitter as the kid. <laughs> honestly, you might as well be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. I think I have to, I think I have to try how many of you guys out of how many situations? I I don't know. Um, let's let's see. Ban bandit camp encounter. That's one. You drag Hoot out of a dangerous situation in freaking King's Watch, I think. So that's two. I can't count past three. Um, and then there's four. And then there's fourth with the boar. <laughs> she's just gonna just go, and I also saved Darius on the beach back at Moonheller Island. Ah, uh, when he got shot, yeah. Uh, honestly, when, when I saw you, I thought you were gonna be a burden. But so far, you're the one keeping our team together. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, Thank you, that take after my parents, that's for sure. Your I don't... parents must be wonderful people. She grabs a locket. They really are. They were fantastic parents and I think I think they raised me well. Hmm. Yeah. I'm just trying to I just hope not to get in your uh you guys' way too much. Well, the sun's going down. It, it, well, it's, it's, it's going down noon. pretty fast. Yeah, it's about noon, 1 p.m.? Oh, around this time, I would say it's around 2. 2. All right. Well, the sun's going down. It won't be, you know, this bite any longer. So, you're going to you're gonna go ask him about your thing? Yeah, yeah, I will. I guess I'm just worried about what he's going to say. If he says no, then he says no. It's really that simple. Yeah. It's not, even just, it's not even just the no response. It's what could be the possible yes response. But I guess I'm going to have to find that out very, 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 very soon. From what I see, from what I see, he's very straightforward. So there's no really need to worry about any, you know, complicated questions or answers. Yeah. I guess I'm just, I guess it's just my, myself maybe not being the brightest sometimes. Look, I, I'll explain once I've talked to him about what I want to say, and then I'll explain to you and you can see what it is. Ah, uh, that's fine. 
All right. Uh, you take care, uh, Bowie. I'll be back soon-ish. I- I'll see. I'll check up the market while I'm down there as well. And find Arius, although, to be fair, it won't be too hard to spot him. Oh, yeah. Did you ever get your thing for Colvar? What? Which? What thing? Harnesses, if I remember. Yeah, he's got, he's got his harness. Okay, that's good. Steve, also, go on. one more thing. Yeah. If there's any like giant hunk of fresh beet, make sure to buy it. Me and Penelope kind of need it right now. <laughs> <laughs> if I can't find any, I'll hunt some. I don't mind good thing. hunting. Good thing I told you to bring that. A bow, eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, if I don't find any, I'll hunt you guys some. I don't mind hunting. <clears throat> as long as people don't find me again. Well, I'll make sure to pinch book by the years and keep her here. <laughs> I can picture that. Anyway, I'm stalling. I am purposely stalling by talking to you longer. I will go down to the market now. And... I'll see you later. Boo. Go on. All right. Bye. Stay and, safe. And, and yeah. you. And so she's looking to just like tell Cola just to stay behind and just just keep an eye on the camp as well, just in case. And so all right. Just, just her, and she's just gonna head down to the beach. Yay! Hey. After an hour, <laughs> I'm gonna mute now. beach and you you're actually you get down to the beach you're in the shopping area that is now covered in numerous stalls and you are you end up accidentally bumping into a woman oh no (laughs) oh a second she bumps into someone she goes oh uh I, i i'm sorry Oh, don't worry about it, young one. Oh, shit. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I'm just just gonna look up. I... uh, Afternoon? Afternoon to you, too. She's just gonna um, look up and down and just go. You know, ah, I'm sorry. I was I was in a bit of a rush. I wasn't looking where I was going. Please don't worry about it. I understand. <sighs> um. Well, she could like put out a hand to shake and go. I'm Alina. Nice to meet you. My name is Ravali. Ah, nice to meet you, Ravali. I was gonna look Alina up and down and say, You... You look quite interesting, I'd say. Heterochromia isn't something that's natural for most things, and for something humanoid like you. We just like take a step back and just kind of like rub her her golden eye and just go, uh, yeah, um, it it I was b- born with it. It's gonna put. Uh... Her hand on her chin and sort of scratch it as if she has like a beard. And keep looking lean up and down for a few seconds before saying I'm not sure I really trust that. Uh, Alicia's just, just just gonna just uh uh why wouldn't you trust that? Uh 
I can tell you're trying to hide something. Huh? Are you alone, or do you have a group here with you? Uh, I'm with a group. I was actually looking for one of them right now. Hmm. But considering, I'm... considering how shaky you are, and me pointing it out, why are you hiding lycanthropy from your group? Aaliyah's just gonna go pale. So very pale. As she's just gonna just go... Don't... What? I... I've, I've dealt with many a lycanthrope in my years. They don't know. I hide it because I'm scared of it. You you remind me of what I was like a few years back. Hiding a curse from those you trust to try to try and seem less threatening or to just maintain that trust. Both. I. It wasn't by choice. I didn't. I wasn't born a werewolf. It, it, it just. It just happened over a year ago. I. 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 It just. And I'm scared of what could happen and to what could. They would think. I. I mean, it, it. People. People hate like Cantro. People kill werewolves, no matter who or what they are. And I don't want them to worry or be scared of me. I just want to help them and maybe find a cure. I. I. I know I shouldn't hide it, but I don't know what else to do. Well, I wouldn't say tell them outright, but I will say try to ease it, try to ease it towards them, drop some hints, to, drop some hints for it so it doesn't come out of nowhere and scare them. Uh, Speaking so. a bit from experience here, <laughs> she let out a soft chuckle. I, I've tried to hint at it a little bit because I want them to know. I do. I really do, but I can't. I don't want to tell them outright. Especially now. We've been traveling for six months and me just telling them this now? I can't just tell them right now. Six months and they still haven't found out. You must be quite good at hiding secrets. Nobody suspects the child. <laughs> oh, trust me. I know. <laughs> oh. You know, all I've managed to be able to do is actually make some potions that stop it when it's the full moon, but that that's about it. Quite troublesome. This is something that you don't want to hold on to. You want to get rid of it permanently. Yes. Well, it's why I'm. It's why I left home. It's why I lost my friends. It's why I'm scared to make new friends. It's why I keep myself distant from everyone. It's the reason for a lot of things. Ollie's gonna sit there and thought for a few moments. 
before piping up. Mm. Well, I can't really give you an exact time of when you'll or when this curse will dissipate. As <clears throat> as far as I know, the only way to remove a curse of this caliber is through a wish spell. Part of the reason why I accepted coming here to Calamus was in hopes of finding something to help with this. Well, there's always the wish spell, which is dangerous on its own, as it could stop said person from casting the spell again. However, you'd be rid of your lycanthropy. <coughs> I wouldn't want to risk someone doing that. It's quite a powerful spell, too, so... As far as I know, that might be the only way to help. However, those potions, if they really do seem to be helping you, then they should tide you over until you find someone who's willing to risk their abilities at casting that spell. She was just like, she's standing there, she's like shaking slightly, and just, I know, and it's just one mistake is all it takes. One slip up, one night, or, and that's it. I either have to quickly leave the camp, or they're gonna find out, and I've only seen what happens once. I've never... I, I've never heard or told anyone, but I've heard the stories and I've seen it firsthand and she's just gonna just... Her eyes are gonna just kind of glance down to the bandage and I know what it feels like and I don't want to do, give this to anyone else. I don't want to hurt anyone, I don't want to do anything. And I don't want to mess up. Had we met five years ago, we'd be in the same boat. <laughs> Though time does move differently in this world than other worlds, so maybe it would not have been five years ago. Five years ago, I'd have been ten. That would have been <laughs> awkward. Well... Time here was slower than the times I'm used to. Five years... than me from five years ago would be in the same boat. Anyway, I'd, I'm getting distracted. <laughs> But what do you plan to do once your curse is revealed? I don't know. I don't know how they would react. I mean, they seem to trust me somewhat, the group. I mean, they trust me enough. But some of them, I can feel, would be upset or angry. And if it's revealed, I don't know. Maybe go back to them, but see how they react. Explain myself, but understand that if they're going to be mad, they're going to be mad. I'm not sure. I'm afraid of the consequences for when it's revealed, if it gets revealed. If I might find a way to break it, and release myself from this curse, I will tell them. But for as long as I can, I'm going to try and keep it hidden. Yeah. 
if if that side of you is shown to your group, promise me one thing. What is it? You'll try your best to make it up to them, as opposed to just moping about, thinking that you don't have a place with them. If your group really do trust you, and really, really do like you, then there shouldn't be much of a problem with them accepting you back into their circle. Even with the harm that you would potentially cause. I don't know if they'd all accept me back. Some of them would. <laughs> One of the party members, Brooke, she would probably welcome me back with open arms. But Hoot, maybe, he might, but Bowie and Darius, I'm not sure. I don't know if they would. Well, whatever happens, just don't run away. It'll make the situation worse. I ran away once before. Well, twice, really. I don't plan to do it again. Good. Well, is going to reach into her pack and pull out her water skin and say, should probably drink some. You are quite pale. Pale... Yep. Scared. Definitely. <laughs> oh, the conversation I expected to have today. She's gonna take the water skin and take a, a sip. Thank you. You're welcome. And I notice that bandage of yours. Uh, yeah. It's seems to have sustained quite a bit of damage in your travels. Uh, in its current condition, I don't know how much longer it'll last. Neither do I. I use the last of my bandages to make something more useful for the group rather than myself. Once again, Rival is gonna reach into her pack and pull out uh, what is it, essentially a bandage and say, here. I have no use for this where I'm going. Oh. I brought it along in case I needed it. Thank you. Mm, thank you. You're quite welcome. She's gonna put that in like a pocket. I. I don't know what to say. This was one conversation I didn't expect to have today. And I apologize for bringing it up so abruptly after just meeting you. <laughs> it's okay. Just keep forgetting how noticeable this eye is. I mean, I've had it questioned before by one of the, by one of the other group members, but uh, I managed to pull some stupid lie out of somewhere, and he believed it, but... You were cursed by some sort of powerful magic, I'm guessing? How did you know? It's a fairly common lie where I'm from. That, and also... A scholar is able to, for lack of a better word, dig out such lies rather quickly. I'm, I'm now just trying to think of, I hope none of them see through it. Like, 
I try not to lie about what happened to me, but I don't. But I also avoid the truth. But that was the only time I've actually lied, because the only thing I couldn't think of how to fake but not fake. Well. As I've said, the group will most likely welcome you back. If you just stay with them and show compassion, for lack of a better term, once again, after the curse is revealed. I try. I, I try and help the group as best as I can, but I still feel like one mistake and they'll all go running. But we'll see. But I will try. Well, I was just gonna give a nod. Well, I shouldn't hold you up any longer. You should go find your group. Yeah. I need to go find one of the members. Something I've been meaning to ask them for five months now. About. And one of the party members finally kicked me in the butt to give me confidence to go and ask them. <laughs> They're good. Bowie out tabaxi. You have a tabaxi in your group as well. Yes, yes we do. Heroes wouldn't be a flirtatious assassin, would they? Um... Excuse me? <laughs> Distant Amrath was screaming, Excuse me! <laughs> Uh, no, I don't think she- hang on. No, I don't think she is. Well, that's one less thing we have in common. We also have- Brooke is a water genasi, Darius is just- he's just a human. And who is a Kenku? A full on Kenku or a half Kenku? A full on Kenku? I see. Anyway, I have held you up. I'm so disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I've held you up long enough. It's all quite alright. Do you perhaps need an escort? Or do you think you'll be okay on your own? Children shouldn't really be running around towns on their own. <laughs> you say that, but... um, uh, She just chuckles and just thinks, I'm pretty sure I might have one of the higher body counts of our group. Oh, that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> I try not to kill, but it also doesn't really help when I use a weapon that's usually known for just its lethality. I mean... I can also relate to that. It, I, I'm sure I'll be fine, but... I'm looking for someone who won't be too hard to spot, anyway. Alright then, if you're sure. I'm sure. Just, want, just don't want a child like you getting hurt. Uh, I'm tougher than I look. She just chuckles and just goes, <laughs> Take, I took a bullet and somehow still survived, so I am tougher than I look. Lycanthropy does wonders for the body. If you call it wonders, yeah, sure. 
I probably think I'm high. I almost took a bowl at once. Yeah. <laughs> well, I shall depart now. Got to get back to doing some research before I return back to my hometown. Well, good luck with your research. Thank you, and good luck with your party. Yeah, I need luck with them. Especially two of them. I'm the kid, and I'm pretty sure I'm the, I'm the babysitter. <laughs> well, if there's anything else, I will be on my way. How tall is Alina? Five foot four. Okay. I think Ravali is actually the same height. <laughs> Oh my god, she's fucking a midget. <laughs> she's a fucking midget. <laughs> Say that as a five foot three person. Pathetic. <laughs> 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 it's, it's okay, Justin's shorter than me. I can Last and five eight. Last and five eight as well. <laughs> Don't Last make me unmute myself. <laughs> Laps and I don't actually know my height because I haven't measured myself in a while. (laughs) Alright. Does Ravali walk away? Where is she going? Ravali's gonna approach Alina for a hug. First. Alina's just gonna just take a second and realize, oh wait, yeah, this is is a hug. This this is a thing that I meant to do. And give a hug, albeit a tense hug. She's still very tense. Thank you. Take care of yourself, alright? I will try. I'm not the one that needs taking care of. I'm the one taking care of my party. Most of them. Most of them, you say? Most. Yes, there are two that indeed would... I feel like would be the ones to get into trouble. One of our party members almost died from eels, of all things. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was gonna let her chuckle and say, that would be a story to tell. It would. Or even magical. They're just normal ribbon eels. <laughs> Okay, I didn't alter we their get it. He's a dumbass. I didn't, I didn't even alter their stats. <laughs> their stats were normal. <laughs> Eddie. <laughs> Just <been blessed. laughs> I'm <so> sorry. <laughs> anyway, Espeon, welcome to Calamus. <laughs> uh, unless there's anything else you need, I will be on my way to find my party members. Well, party member. <laughs> what I'm looking for. No, there's nothing else I need. She gives a nod to Smog and goes, well, you take care of yourself, enjoy your research, and thank you for, well, talking about it. Only You're one. welcome. <laughs> thank you. Just give a nod and a smile before walking off. Bed into the marketplace. Val is gonna walk in a separate direction. Alright. Also, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna I'm gonna say one thing before I leave. That Alina does not care about Rivali's heterochromia after she said it was uncommon. Uh no, she noticed but she was too busy kind of thrown off about hey, you have lycanthropy. Like, oh. Okay. Oh, oh no. Fair oh, enough. No. <laughs> Her brain was in other places. Got it. Thank you for coming, Espeon. Thanks. You're welcome. I, the second you did, I was like, oh, wait, oh, wait. Thank you for the guest appearance. <laughs> that was a really good I, we've been playing, we've I was been not expecting this. Uh, good job, We've been playing this scene for like the last five weeks. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, I was not expecting just, a Rivali cameo, not, not gonna lie. Good. <laughs> that was fun. We weren't supposed to. Okay. Anyway, Alina walks up and she looks back for a moment and you watch as 
Vala seemingly disappears. Before turning, before you turn back around and head towards the shopping area. And before I get to yeah, you, no, go to someone else, please. I've 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 taken up enough time in the mo at the moment. Brooke. <laughs> Yay. Where are you? What are you doing? I'm still at the shopping where, area. Where did you come from, Cotton Eye Joe? Oh god. Um, I came from the freaking people selling and. Oh god, that felt so good. Ah, my back finally popped. Oh nice. my god, that felt so good. That's that's lovely. Um, I've been in pain for three days. Oh no. It's finally popped, guys. Brooke is looking around at mother's shops. I'm assuming she'll. She might see Darius or nah. Oh yeah, you would have passed by Darius as he made his way to the animals. Oh, okay. Cool. Anyway, um, I'm gonna I'm not gonna get roll for it. I'm just gonna say that the next place that you find is a place that looks like they are selling wands. Oh whoa. I'm going to look at the wands. Hey. Okay. Walk over, and at the moment, they don't have many. They actually only have five up for display, and they all appear to be the same thing. Um, huh. There is a like a little label, and you can tell that these are healing word wands. Hmm. Are there any other ones, or is that the only ones? Those are the only ones currently. But there's a few of them. Hmm. Fuck. Brooke kind of thinks for a second of... I do already know how to heal, but... She's gonna ask, how much for one of these wands? The tiefling behind the counter looks at you. He is also um, emptying out some boxes. And he looks at them and says, well, how many do you want? Um... I was thinking maybe just one. That would be 180 gold pieces. Huh. How many uses can I get out of one before I have to wait? They are two charges a day. Two charges a day. handy. 180 gold. Hmm. Um, would I get a discount for buying another? Chuckles. Okay. Entirely depends. <laughs> Peach, what the fuck does that mean? Ask me that. Ask the man. <laughs> okay, fine. Brooke looks at him like, what What do you mean by that? Like, she doesn't say anything. She's like, you're not giving me a yes or no answer. <laughs> Smiles well. Are you going to buy more than one? I'm thinking about it. Some of my other party members may uh, be in need of one as well. I guess where I'm split up. Well, if you buy... He thinks from it. If you buy more than three, I will give you a discount. Three. I do not need more than three. <laughs> <laughs> Brooke is not going to spend her money meaninglessly. Huh? I have thousands of pieces of gold. Shut up! I'm you stingy! Thousands. I hoard my gold, you Ding Nabbit. You have almost 5,000 pieces of gold. Shut up. Oh my god. Shut up. And. Wait. Hmm. Sorry. I'm trying to. I'm just like thinking it out in my head here. Huh. So more than three. So if I buy four, how much would that that be then? If you buy four, I could cut the price in half. Price in half, so that's uh Oh wait no. Times four. So if you bought four, that would be seven hundred and twenty and then seven hundred and twenty halved would be 360. That's actually a pretty good deal. That's a really good deal. 
Brooke's gonna think for a second. She's probably gonna think I'm really irresponsible for buying four of these, but sure. Alright, go ahead and take 360 gold from your inventory. And now I have four of those. Alright, cool, that's great. He thanks you for your business. What else are you gonna do? I'm gonna look around at the other shops as well. Alright, you notice a scroll shop. Which ones have you been to? You've been to the animals, you've been to the wand, the ring, and the weapons. Okay, yeah. You notice two other shops. You notice a scroll shop and a potions shop. Hmm. Brooke's gonna... She's gonna go to the scroll shop. Peace. Scrolls. You go over there, and there are a few scrolls out on the table. Yes. What, what type of scrolls are they? Um, they all seem to be the same. Um, and they, you can tell that these are all second level scrolls. What spells? They're not labels. Oh, okay. Then the last one's like, um... What spells happen to be in these scrolls? What did you say? What spells happen to be in these scrolls? The the man behind the counter looks up at you. He blinks a few times. And he leans his head to the side. Like He turns his head to the side a little bit. And cups his hand behind his ear and says, I I'm sorry, you have, to, you have to speak up a bit. I I'm afraid I can't hear you. What spells are in these scrolls? <laughs> well, he puts out a piece of paper that he had in his pocket, and he begins reading over it for a moment. Give me a second, I have a thing here somewhere. Oh, uh, well, I have a dark vision scroll, a, a, a dust devil, Earthbind, um, bark skin. Um, I have some more, but I haven't unpacked them yet, and I, I'll probably do that later. Hmm. Okay, quick out of character question How do scrolls work? <laughs> I've never so, actually used them. It's basically just a free spell slot. You, let's say. Let's say you want to know, you want to use the spell Barkskin, but you don't want to have to use a spell slot. But hey, you've got this trusty scroll here. You use the charger and the scroll, and now you have Barkskin until it wears off. Hmm. Cool. So it just, you, can't, you just keep it? Keep the spell? Keep the effects? Huh. What do you mean? It's basically a one. It's basically a one-use portable spell uh, that you keep in your inventory. Yeah. These are only. These are only one charge. They're not multiple. Hmm. Yeah, that's gonna. Can you like? So, what are the spells again? Skin, dark vision, dust devil, and earthbind. Mm, thank you, but no thank you. And she's gonna walk away. He nods his head. The last one, that, um, the last all you see is the potions. Hmm. Hello. Hello. I look at the potions. You see a potion of fire breath, 
a potion of growth, and a potion of water breathing. What the frick does a potion of growth do? <laughs> Just... To grow. T do you stay grown, or...? <laughs> oh, wow. Well. Oh, bird. Stop it. Um... I don't remember what it does. I forgot to fucking write it down. Wow. Pretty sure all it does is make you grow. Brooke kind of... Is kind yeah, of... Yeah, it makes you grow. Looks meh. Okay. She's just kind of... Uninterested in the uh, growth potion and the... Water... Uh, water breathing, you said? Mm hmm There's fire breath, growth, and water breathing. Yeah. He's gonna take interest in the fire breathing potion. Right. And, um, how much for this? And she points to one of the fire breath potions. A man behind the counter, um, smiles and says, 250 gold pieces. 250. Hmm. Let's see. <laughs> Darius, wait, what? Darius, what? JT. <laughs> I can't. I'm in D and D mode, not casual mode right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> you gonna buy the potion? Hmm. Brooks gonna. I think she actually's gonna. 250, you say? Huh. 250. Hmm. I, uh... I believe I'd be interested in two of these, then. Alright, that seems... quite lovely. And he hands over you two, and holds out his hand for payment. So that would be 500, then. Ah, she's like... Counting out her like gold, she's gonna say, "It's like you wouldn't by chance offer a discount." Smiles. Sorry, sweetie, I'm not like the other stalls. <laughs> but, okay. <sighs> well, worth a shot. And she hands him the five hundred gold. If D and D Beyond would stop being an asshole. Smiles. Thank you for your business. All right. And she's, her, what are you gonna do now? She's gonna kind of look around for her companions. Uh, like she knows Darius is there. She's gonna see if possibly anyone else, like Bowie or Elena or if Hoot's awake, and see if they'd be interesting in interested in possibly that uh water walk ring. Roll me perception to see if you see anybody. Oh boy. see Darius, but he seems to be busy talking to somebody over by the animals. We see Alina, but she seems busy talking to somebody as well. Huh. Well, I'm gonna make it back to camp, and gonna go talk to Billy then. Alright. Now we're gonna jump from you to Hoot. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I have been waiting. I've been stalling for so long. <laughs> oh boy. Alright. <laughs> <Sister, sighs> yes. It appears that I cannot find my notes, so you know what? You're up. Oh, what we're to do. It. No? Do you want Wait. me to act it out? Because I can't find my notes! You want to take a few minutes to look for it? I've been looking. <laughs> I'll leave me. Oh. Okay. Can't we find just, it. We might can just try have to and remember it. I can try and remember it. Oh, no. First. Since it's the first one, it's better for it to him not to remember all of it. Alright. Okay, so Hoot, you, the first time in years, you drift up asleep. 
And at first, nothing happens. It's just sleep. There's not darkness. There's not anything. You're just you're just unconscious. And then you find yourself in a forest, and you're seemingly running. You hear laughter all around you, and it's it's loud. It's like booming in your ears. You look, you turn, look behind you, and you see just shadowy figures chasing after you, and like a wall of shadow behind you. And the faster you run, it's like the shadow wall is going even faster, and it's increasingly speeding up until you turn back around to cho- to try and find somewhere to get away from it. And seemingly run into another shadow wall. Everything goes black. And suddenly you're in the camp. And you see in your hands daggers. And for a moment you freak out. Like, and then back again. And suddenly. You're waking up. So as soon as he starts to wake up, he's instantly going to scramble awake and try to brush himself off, like pretending to throw the daggers, thinking he still has it. And once he realizes it was a dream, he's going to look over and see his journal. He's going to slowly pick it up and he's just going to toss it as far as he can. And not in mimic, he's going to say, I'm tired being a Fucking pawn! Why can't I just be normal? And like, it's a mixture of anger and tears. Would Bowie be able to hear this? Bowie and Brooke would, would Brooke both be- hear. Oh. Well, because she's hearing yelling, Bowie's just gonna check a bit on Hoot and see how they're doing. Because that's what friends do. Basically, she's just gonna pop her head into the into the tent and just be like, "Hey, you're screaming a bunch. You all right?" <laughs> I'm gonna respond soon. There's a TV on, and you get back to a place where you can't hear. Who looks just gonna like be holding his head in his hands, crying, not even noticing Bowie there, just saying, "I lost." Everything. I just want to be with my family again, but no. Fuck up once in the past and these fucking curses. I can't just be normal. Brooks, um, gonna. Oh boy. Well, she's gonna be there as well and be like, is everything, and as she sees him breaking down and mentioning this, she's gonna kind of actually go for a hug, like, he probably needs this. I have no idea what the heck's going on, but he definitely needs this. I would warn Brooke, but... Nah. He's just gonna sob into her at that point, just hugging her (laughs) tightly. Like, it's clear that he's still trying to get himself out of that dream, and, like, he's shaking because it affected him that much. Well, and he's just rambling off nonsense. Okay. As he's doing that, I'm gonna kind of before you do that. Him. Oh. Food. What? What? Huh? So guess what? Oh no. Journal's back. Oh, okay. It's not that bad. <laughs> Suddenly, fire <laughs> rains down from the sky. That's okay. <laughs> as I was saying, I- as the way he's mumbling as she's holding her is, as he's like hugging her and crying, he's just saying repeatedly, I don't want to be a fucking pawn. I just want to be normal. That's like all he's saying on repeat. Brooke has no idea what's going on, but she's gonna hold him like kind of gently and be like, we'll figure this out. We'll figure this out, Hill. Meanwhile, Bowie is currently reaching into one of her back satchels, pulls out the ball of yarn, starts unraveling it. <laughs> uh, 
And once she's done unraveling it, she's just gonna place the pile in front of Hoot and just try to get his attention. If he's that's possible. Ev he's ever going, ever so slightly going to like look up and kind of jump back a bit at the movement, but like quickly calm down, realizing it's Bowie. Hey. Not right now. <laughs> I, I, and like, he's just kind of like frozen in like a shocked state, clearly traumatized by the dream he just currently had. Both of you can tell that he is talking in common, which is unnatural for a Kenku. Bowie does not know that. <laughs> yeah, Bowie does Brooke, not know that. Brooke knows this, Brooke but does. at this Brooke knows this, and at this point she's like, you know what, there's something up with him, but clearly there's something else go uh, up with him, and he needs comforting right now. I'll ask about that later. <laughs> well, if you want to take take your mind off of something for a bit, just you know, please, <laughs> just you know, turn this turn this back into a ball for me, please. <laughs> he's ever going. He's ever so slightly going to nod, but like at this point, he if if Brooke is still hugging him, he's kind of going to have a death grip on him. On her as he's trying to calm himself down. Um, Brooke's not the best at this, but she's gonna try and hum like a small melody that she knows from when she was a child to try and calm him down. Just, I I don't feel confident in doing that right on screen. <laughs> no, <laughs> wait, well, sure. wait. I'm gonna fucking do this. I don't know where it's gonna go, but it's gonna go somewhere. The first step to being normal is. Oh. Sorry. Go. It doesn't work. <laughs> Brooke's gonna keep just doing that and trying to get him to calm down. Go ahead, Ferb. Nice. Anyways, Bree's just gonna say, well. The first step to being normal is knowing that you're not normal at all. That's one step to being normal. The second thing is, you know, try and find something to do. Something to, I don't know, distract yourself for a bit while you're able to clear out your mind. That could be either, you know, sharpening, sharpening the blade, cooking, sewing, or, you know, that yarn ball. Anyways, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do just that right now. I'm going I'm going to the marketplace to sell my wares. So book, mind looking after him for a bit? Of course. Yeah. Anyways, hoot or you know, whatever. She's gonna pat pat him on the back and just be like, stay safe for us, okay? He he's just gonna hesitantly nod. Planning on talking to her later, just... He's gonna take a deep breath to try and stop kind of shaking. This is... All right. This is... Thank, thank you, Brooke. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Well, you, like, the way you were talking, Bowie walked off. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Brooke's gonna. Take, you're you're welcome. Do it. Is is this related to why you and Alina and Darius earlier? He's going to nod and try to like wipe his tears away, even though they're not stopping. Okay. Yeah, it's it, it's a long story. You don't have to tell me if you don't want to. Were you also told the story about the Kenku and not stealing? I mean, almost every child was. Well, hi. Brooke, even though he didn't finish his sentence, starts piecing you know it together. Oh. That was, what? That's how he, he ended hi. it. He said hi, because he's the bird. 
Oh, okay. I thought he said I. Oh, hi. Okay. She, her hi. eyes kind of widen and she like pats him on the like back and well, we'll just have to figure this out then. If if you ever see any daggers, do not let them near me. Get them as far away as possible, please. I don't want to die like that again. I I won't let you hoot, okay? I, I won't let you. I don't... Listen, I really... I care about you. I care about everyone in this group. And I wouldn't let you die, okay? I won't. I'll make sure to keep you safe. Thanks, Brooke. I, I don't mean to tell me like this. I, it's yesterday. My stupid journal. It had stuff I've never seen in there before. Darius kind of knew what it was talking about, but he did his best to help, and he didn't know exactly. And then I told Elena, and she she knew. But that's what I found out about the stupid bears. I just want it to end. I, I don't know when, but but we'll figure something out, okay? We'll figure something out, and we'll make it end. Okay? Uh, okay. I don't want to lose anyone else, and I especially don't want to lose you. Thank you. I'm so sorry it happened like this. It's okay. It's okay. Do you want to see the journal? Maybe you could find something out with it? Only if you- if you're okay with it. Making Flues cry. Nice. <laughs> oh no! Nice. No. And he slowly hands over the journal. You saw I threw this. The stupid thing won't leave me alone. Right. Okay. Okay. You look into this journal, and you... You have seen into this journal before when you've looked over Hoot's journal, Hoot's shoulder while he was writing in it, and you never saw anything unusual. The instant you open up this journal, you see blood everywhere. She's gonna let an audible, oh god, out. Now you see what I mean? She nods and she starts going through the pages. Did she look at like the very beginning of the book, like the opening cover page? Yeah, she's. Yeah, I think so. She's. That's when she's gonna find out who it's real name. Yeah. You see, Kenneth Evermore, and on the front page, it's like it says. Property of Kenneth Evermore. And it's in fancy old handwriting. Nice. Mm -hmm. And she's gonna start flipping through, like, kind of looking through, and as she sees more blood and everything, she's gonna... I I'm... I'm so sorry. <laughs> Kenneth. I'm so sorry. Go ahead and roll me history. Or not history. Um, religion. Oh boy. Actually, you know what? Both. Don't mean history and religion. Okay. Mm, excuse me. Ah, that's the wrong thing. 
<laughs> you saw how nothing. dare you? <laughs> how dare you? This is the second time I've done this today. In this server. In my house? In this Christian Minecraft server. Oh, wait, I'm yeah. yeah. You don't recognize the names that you find. Come on. Yeah! But you recognize um, some of the things that Kenneth is talking about in this book, like some stories that you heard as a kid, like the myths like, that parents teach their kids to get them to listen and to not steal. You recognize a few stories in here that look like who may have caused some of these stories. They're just <laughs> the biggest <laughs> role model ever. <laughs> Here, you recognize a few <laughs> stories in here that may have been kickstarted by Hoot. Good or bad, or are they all bad? Yes. Combination. You are also able to recognize that through these different chapters, the handwriting changes, and you can tell that this book is. The book itself looks like it's brand new, but the pages, um, as you. Read the the older ones. You can see that somehow they've turned old, and this this as you get to the newer chapters, they look fine. Oh boy! Does anything in particular catch my eye? Just the gone godly amounts of blood. Yeah. Oh God. Jeez. At least it's dry. <laughs> <laughs> and none of it's none of it is wet. I'd be it's concerned. All, it's all dry blood. She's gonna hand it back to Hoot, and she doesn't know what to say. Hoot being handed it again is just gonna toss it out of the tent. Oh God. Clearly, just <laughs> done with it. Five seconds later, it shows back up in the tent. <laughs> When that happens, Buck just kind of looks at it like, what the fuck? He's slowly going to look up and like, like there's, there's slight tears in his eyes. They're slowly calming down, but now his anger is getting more prevalent. You see what I mean? Yeah, I do. You, you shouldn't have to be going through this. I've lost everything. I've lost my family, my friends. I watched my own grandchildren grow up without me and couldn't say anything. I became a stupid children's tale. And I'm just finding out why. I don't know what to do. <sighs> Fire in your shoes, I won't know what to do either. I'm we'll figure this out. I yelled at you earlier. This is exactly why I did it. It's fine. I didn't know what was going on. That's all. It's fine. I, would... I understand. I mean, not understand, but. Yeah, if. I don't know if I could handle As I said before and I'll say it again, we're going to figure this out. And we're going to get answers. <gasps> That's a good segue. JT JT Yo, it's me. Little J. What is the Darius man doing? Screw Darius May. What is your opinion on Hoot? Tough what? Grass. What did you say? I said, May, what is your opinion on Hoot? Oh, and then she didn't say anything. <laughs> May, you're making me look bad. May, what's your opinion on Kenneth? Try to find uh, yeah, I, I I bet May is one of those people. Yeah. Hey May, what is your opinion on Kenneth? 
She's having none of your shit. <laughs> <laughs> Darius Hi. was last talking to Gyrus and Kronika. No. Uh, about to go in, in, see a blood. About to activate the time clock. N no. You're talking to Gyrus and Mango, and you're by the Thunderbird. Mangonica. You bang sold the car. No. Car in this fantasy household? As yeah, a wise a man once landing. said. As the wise man once said. Ah, oh, fuck it. What? How much for the Thunderbird? <laughs> the the man, the um, God, but the, the I can't remember the names of my own NPCs. Ah. <laughs> Gyrus smiles at you, and he leans over to Mango and kind of motions for him to lean down a bit. And he leans down, they, they whisper to each other a little bit. And after a moment, they both stand up straight and they look at you. Garrus smiles and says, how does 2,000 gold sound? Sounds like <laughs> fun to me. More than fair. <laughs> Sorry, JT, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Flip said, May's opinion isn't expressed until she's on the other side of the door from JT. <laughs> she likes to pretend she's not being heard. <laughs> that right, May. Don't you look away from me, Missy. You know it's true. <laughs> Alright, what was Daria saying? I heard something about a bird. He said, sounds fair to me. All right. All right. They began showing you some things that come with the bird, which is like an arm brace. If you ever want the bird to like land on your arm so the, the claws don't tear your arms to ribbons. Um, some food for the bird, just in case you don't have any at the moment. Basically bird things. Hello? Okay. Hello? Everyone die? My no. Dad came in, so I had to not be alive. Okay. Well. I guess I have a Thunderbird now. I do. Oh, is gonna count out stats. a lot of gonna count out a lot of coin purses full of gold and shove them all over to Gyrus and Mango. Mango. Mango, yes. <laughs> Your stats for the bird later. Excellent. You, um, Mango and Garrus show you how to put the the arm guard on properly so that it's not too tight, not too loose. And Garrus makes a, a special whistle, and he, he teaches you how to do the whistle. It's fairly easy, so you're able to do it as well. And once he teaches you, he recommends that you blow. He recommends that you do the whistle. You do the whistle, and the bird flutters over and lands on your arm. Oh, fucking sweet. She lands on your arm, gives like a little preen sound, like a little coo, and then like rubs her head a bit against yours like a cat would. I'm gonna give the burb some some gentle strokes. He seems to enjoy it. She flaps her wings a bit. 
and makes like a happy bird noise. I'm going to turn to Gears and, uh, oh, God damn it. I already got a fucking <laughs> habit. I, I just stopped myself from saying Chronica. I'm just turn call it Chronica. I don't Erica. care. I'm going to turn to Gears <laughs> and Mago and say, thank you for your business. Thank you for yours. I'll be off then. I hope you all have a very pleasant evening. Same to you. <laughs> Goodbye, stranger. Please, call me Darius. Yes, Miles. Shall see you around, Darius. Darius tips his tricorn and begins to make his way back to the camp. You do that, and you walk right into Alina. Oh, hey! Hello there. Oh, uh... Hey, um... <clears throat> Lena, you would notice that Darius now has a bird on his shoulder. That's the size of a bald eagle. She's, you know, sort of like first be looking to the ground, like she looks a little bit shaken, kind of like a little bit distant. But then she kind of like snaps to reality a little bit, looks at the bird, and just goes, "Huh? See, you found yourself some uh, peculiar company." Wow, look at you. Looking towards the bird. Yes. A lot of my old friends really loved birds, so... A figure could be useful and... Well, it makes for a good companion. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, just go again, just look to the ground. So she's just again just trying to to think for a second. Who so eventually just looking up and just um Hey, um Doris, if it's not much of a bother, I've been meaning to ask you something. And I was wondering if you had the time or if Yes. What is it? She's just like look around and how populated is the area? Would you say there's a lot of people around? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's a giant boat. It's docks. There's know, a like, lot of people. I don't know how big the beach is, so I don't know if the but well, they're not all on the beach, like they're all over the place because there's not enough room on the beach. She's look around and just go. Mind if I ask you somewhere a little bit quieter? Mm, okay. Thank you. I promise this will not take too much time. And she's going to walk over to a quieter spot where there's less people or no people. It takes you a minute or so, but you're able to find a place where there's no people. And she's like, she's gonna like, just like, kind of like, pull her hair back as she's just like, trying to collect her thoughts, like, mentally preparing herself. I've been meaning to ask this for quite a while, and it's been on my mind for a while. You're the only one in this group that I know who has some um, military connection, and there's been. It's to do with, well, my nightmares that I get. I. I heard from one of my dad's friends. He was ex-military that he used to get nightmares and things like that, but... And it was to do with something... Uh, I don't know, it was... Called... Well, they called it post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD, and... I'm not sure if... 
that's even possible for me to have. I mean, I mean, I, I only heard people from military the military getting it, and it, it's and. I don't think I have it because, I mean, I've never been in the military and I'm I'm too young to get it. But I, I don't know if I'm being stupid or if this is just something normal to get this. I don't know where I'm going. It's been on my mind for a while. Normal uh, PTSD when you've undergone extreme trauma at any point during your life. Doesn't matter from where, or doesn't matter the age. Oh. I didn't think that. I didn't know that it was actually possible. I mean, She's gonna look kind of like already from the talk with Rivali earlier. She's already kind of seemingly emotionally all over the place. It. I hate it. I really do. I don't want it to keep happening. I don't want to keep getting nightmares and or getting tense at even the slightest thing, or... I don't know. Even if I knew who could, well... Brooke, Julian, Kenneth, I didn't... I don't think... They, as as, I mean, I think about it maybe with Kenneth, but we don't know what happened in his past lives, but... You're the only one who I knew who had military background, and the only person I heard it from was one of my dad's friends, who was ex-military. Hence why I didn't think I had, I, it was possible for me, and I mean, what I went through, I, I mean, oh, I don't know. <laughs> why did I have to run to that person earlier? Why did they make me lose my train of thought? Well, it's not something you're going to get over overnight. It's something you're going to have to work at for a long time. It's been a year. It's not easy to forget like that. It's going to take more than a year. It's going to take a while. Don't expect it to just happen. Don't expect to just get over it. You're not weak or stupid. You're still remembering it a year from now or two. I don't want to remember. I don't want to go to sleep knowing that I'm going to remember. Well, we can always get what we want, what we want don't we? I know. That's something you have to live with until you can get over it. You're going to, even if it doesn't seem like it now, I'll still help in the future. And it's just, I was hoping, hoping that maybe leaving Magia would make them less, but if anything, the one on the boat. The one that woke you guys all up. That was actually one of the worst. Maybe once or twice they've been like that or worse, but... I hope they don't keep going. I don't hope they don't keep happening like that. That's what I was scared of. If they did get bad, waking you guys up. You guys got enough to worry about when it comes to me being the the child of the group, but I, I didn't 
nightmares added on top of that, I didn't think would be, well, I was worrying there'd be too much to handle. You don't need to worry about being a burden because you have PTSD. He gives a quick, like, a, a small smile over, and... Yeah, I guess. I just don't want it to affect me all the time. Back when I left home, I didn't exactly have a home at that point. And I remember I, I, multiple times I skipped days of like a few nights of sleep just because I was too scared. And I'm still scared. And I don't want to be scared. I really don't know what you want me to tell you here, Lena. Something you have to live with. Yeah. Something a lot of people have to live with. I know. I just... I guess I just wanted to talk to somebody about it. And you're the only one who... Well... <laughs> But would know something about it. Yeah, well, I know a thing or two. So, do you need anything else while we're here? I think for a second. Um, no, I, I don't think so. I, I guess I just want to just say before. I go and check out the stalls. Thank you. And just thank you. Darius lets out a very just dispassionate. Yeah, you're welcome. For making his way back to camp. He just looks over, kind of just. Just thinking before making a way towards the uh, the shopping center area, whatever. <laughs> Hello. Hello. We're going to end the session. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oof. Well then. Bam. What a fucking trip. What a trip. And we're still ah! on the same thing. <laughs> we're still on the same thing. <laughs> I wasn't expecting day, to be the one to comfort. The second who second day. Isn't this like the fourth second. episode that's on the second day? I think so. It's like. Maybe, yeah. yeah. I know. Oh my god. What the god. hell, Miss? Guys. Day two. <laughs> hey, what the frick? <laughs> Welcome to the day, day, day two. Our um, um, day two. Everyone's dying emotionally. <laughs> I, don't know who. I don't know what. Just 12 like hours later. So okay, two. At this rate, we're, we're, gonna have, we're gonna have 24 hours on day two. Like a t 24 hours worth of stream on day two. It's gonna be an actual whole day. <laughs> Damn. Um, <laughs> honestly, okay, no, three things that need to be draw drawn from this session. Um, uh, Alina hugging Rivali, because that was an amazing cameo right there. And, uh, freaking Brooke comforting Hoot. I was not expecting to be the one to be doing that, but you know what? I was. You're I was welcome. expecting Bowie to not know the Kenku story. So now he has to figure out how the hell to explain that to Bowie. God. And then, um, and then a third thing that needs to be drawn is Alina talking to Darius. And Darius holding his new bird. Yes, that, that needs- the bird thing needs to be drawn as a shitpost. Wow. Floof, get on it! Nah, let's get- I mean, Floof's got a lot of projects already. I know she's got, like, two. I know one of them's my request. I know one of them's another request. She's a kitten, so 
She'll, she'll get on it eventually, don't you worry. She'll give us a shit post at like 1 a.m. some random morning in the next month. <laughs> Honestly, oh. you're not wrong. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Floof, that's a compliment if you're listening. We love you. We love you, Floof. Oh, like I, I, I hope mean, you guys enjoyed the session. Oh hell yeah! I have been. Oh, waiting. and Peach, if you ever, if you ever do find that that dream story, can you please send it to me? If I ever find it, <laughs> yes. Okay, thank I you. I have been waiting, like, seven weeks for Alia to ask Darius about that. I have been waiting so long. Espion and I have been waiting for Rivali to come in for eight weeks. Oh, join join the crew of waiting a long time. Patience is virtue. Oh yeah. no, no, I'm probably gonna be joining that soon. No, because <laughs> I have something I want to say as well, but I have to wait for the right opportunity to show up. Hi, well, hi, welcome, welcome, welcome to my club that I've been doing for seven weeks. <laughs> yeah, uh, welcome hi, to welcome Chili. to Backstory Central. Yeah, but I don't initiate it. I have to wait for somebody else. <laughs> I say goodnight to chat. Yes. Uh, night chat. Bye chat. Thanks for watching. What? Hopefully no, you thank you for watching us be emotional chat. idiots. Thank you for any bits. Thank you for any donations, subscriptions. Everyone have a good night. Stay safe. Yes. Drink water. Everyone take care. Thank you all for coming to Calamus and see you guys next week with whatever other shit we get ourselves into. Next week is episode 20. Most likely ah. erectile dysfunction. Oh. I, already, I already stopped. I think, I think the last thing they heard was episode 20.